it's overlay. It'd be under oh. human overlay. It's overlay. It'd be under oh. human.
introduce our GCU JV team. Come on out, boys. Woo! Show off, show off. How are we doing, guys? They are coached and team captain by Mark and Josh. Wonderful team right there. Great spirit. Love them to death. Yeah! I love to hear that. Is Tyler not back yet? Is he all right? That's okay. Is he going pee? It's okay. I'll stop a little bit. How are we doing today, though? We having a good day so far? You let me know. Come on, I got to hear from y'all. I need to hear something. Come on. We are we having a good day? That's what I like to hear. Thank you. All right. I'm having a pretty good day myself so far. I'm a little hungry, I will say. Maybe eventually I'll get some food going, but that's all right. ASU, I heard you guys went and got some food. Where'd you guys go? Einstein's. Oh, bagels are bomb. You didn't get me one? Uh, that's toxic, you know? Now, now I gotta report you. Now you're gonna be chat banned. Okay, look, I got a broken ankle, man. I gotta, I can't walk that far. Hey, if you buy me one, I will personally pay you twice the amount. Personally. 100%. I'm a man of my word. I will shake on it right now. I don't know, like a breakfast sandwich or something. <laughs> it's too late now, though. Ooh, should have thought about me. You know, I'm a little too nice. That's all right. <sighs> oh, yeah, I just want to say, have you seen this beautiful, beautiful, gorgeous trophy right here? One. One. Lucky, lucky team will be taking this home. <laughs> that was scary. One lucky team will be taking this home. Let me say, oh, that looks sexy. That looks real good. I would love to have this right in front of my desk. And so, welcoming up our GCU varsity team with the team captain of Justin Jones. Part-time coached by Ariana Lycia, wonderful woman right here. Also my mom, love her to death. All right, let's give it up for these teams right here. They've been competing in a show match. It's first thing going on, and then we'll be competing even more. We'll have a nice little tournament going. We ready? Are we ready? Yeah. Woo! Give me, give me some love. All right, let's get this thing kicking and going. Hi, welcome to the GCU Arena. I am John Bediza Saleem. I'm typically a varsity player and the coach for the JV Overwatch team on campus. But today I'm neither of those things. I'm going to be your host and caster for today. I'm your secondary caster. I am Ben Blossom Brick Pato, and I am one of the community managers for GCU Esports. And we're ready to get right into this game. Yeah, I'm excited to watch G uh, GCU Esports play. I haven't actually seen a lot of varsity or jv play um just because i haven't really been too active in the overwatch senior yet mm -hmm. but i at least know enough about the game and i'm happy to be here so yeah i'm in a i'm in a very special place because i've actually seen both of these teams practice especially watching their seasons in the tespo overwatch collegiate homecoming series uh, as well as the collegiate star league nace series varsity had a very good run this year ending at seven and three i believe for the uh, Tespo series, and the JV ending at 5-5, five and five, if I recall correctly. So, as the players are getting ready, it's very exciting as we're moving into this game. Yeah, I'm excited to see how everything plays. What comps should we expect to be seeing from these players? Yes. We're seeing going, that you know them. Yes, from the JV, we're going to expect lots of double shield, lots of brawl. That's going to be a lot of their comfort areas. Uh, some of the maps are going to see a little bit of dive. I wouldn't expect too much. And for the varsity, we're going to see a very broad range depending on what the maps are. Yeah, because I, if I remember correctly, it's more of a map-dependent meta right now. Correct. Given the balanced state of the game. Yeah, different different maps have different comps mostly. Yes, yeah, so there's something, something like Havana would be double shield. Havana, you have double shield, double yeah. snipers. Uh, it also depends on like team's preferences. That too. Right, because you can have you might, yeah, hold the door with Brawl or something like that. Right, there's always the, the spawn hold, but you can have if the team really loves dive, this is a good Overwatch meta because you can run anything that the team really wants to. Yeah. If you're like really going for that, you have some teams that will like one trick brawl. In the Tespa series, that's something that the varsity was pretty well known for, was just running brawl in a lot of areas that teams weren't really comfortable in and then taking them from 
that area where they're used to playing and then just dragging them down to where they're most comfortable. So It's not a bad game plan at all. No, no. It, it works. The the results, they didn't make it to the playoffs for TESPA, but they got seven and three, seven wins is more than respectable. Yeah, any positive win rate is always a good look for a team. Absolutely. I believe they placed 39th out of 300 different schools. It's very respectable placing. Yeah, I believe it's around top 20 percent top correct if I'm wrong yeah maybe like even top 15 11 12 percent yeah. i'd say it's especially considering how good some of those teams were yeah like we were looking at teams that are scrimming at like 4 to 300 4 to 400 sr and you have teams don't forget players of this age are playing overwatch league yeah absolutely some of the teams that they played against had teams where like they're losing players because they're getting drafted into the overwatch league or like even entire teams that are contenders. That really puts it in perspective. Yeah, it's very stiff competition for these uh, these tournaments, especially with the teams that we have here as well, because ASU and U of A also did very well in the TESPA series. So just to introduce the first match, this is just going to be uh, our main GCU team versus the JV team, which is already on stage. Uh, we're as waiting the players for players are warming up and getting into the lobby and getting yep. ready. This is going to be a really lobby. exciting match though. Uh, for I'm sure. very much looking forward to watching it. Yeah, so you said more of a brawl or even dive style. We're going to see more of a brawl style from the varsity. That's what I expect. It's possible they pull something random. I know we do have Justin Jones filling in instead of JOC, who is typically playing. So we're going to see less dive because okay. JOC is very well known on the varsity team for playing a lot of Doomfist and being kind of a staple in those dive metas. Okay. So we may see some mix-ups. We're not going to actually know until we get into the lobby. All right. So you said Doomfist. What DPS should we be expecting from Varsity first off? A lot of Cole, like Cole Cassidy may for the Brawl. Uh, for Double Shield, if we ever go to like a Junker Town, which is one of Varsity's favorite maps by far, we're going to see a lot of Double Snipers, right? Hanzo it's an Ash. interesting favorite map. It, it is an interesting favorite map. A lot of people really hate it. Yeah, I, I'm one of those people as a someone who plays hit scan but can't play Widowmaker. Mm -hmm. it, it's very well known for teams like really disliking Junker Town. So when you're, if you lose map two in a series, right, because it's best of three or best of five, bringing them to Junker Town and making it so that they like don't know what's going on or they're not yeah. very comfortable, very good way to swing the momentum of the series. Sounds genuinely convincing, yeah. Yes, it works very well. What I expect for maps, if I had to guess, it's going to be loser picks map, a winner picks side, so we're probably going to, I don't know what we're going to see for control, because... Control is likely where we're starting, correct? Contr we're going yep. control hybrid escort. Okay. I don't know where JV is going to take it for control. I don't know if they have, like, a favorite map for control. With It's Busan, Oasis, and one more, I should know. This is the same map pool as the Tesla series for anybody that was... Nepal? Is it, Nepal? is it Nepal? I think it's Nepal. It's definitely Nepal or uh, Lijon, right? Lijon, that's what it is. Okay. I know the well, I'd be excited to see Lijong. Li Lijong is going to be fun. I know JV has a lot of practice on Lijong. That's a fan favorite map, too, so just if, in general the game. If I had to guess the layout for like the entire series, we're going to go Lijong. JV's going to take it to King's Row as hybrid because that's one of their like personal favorites. I know that's like a fan favorite as well. A lot of people like King's Row. I like it. That's my favorite map. And then if we go to map three, when we go to map three. Um, <laughs> when? When, yeah. yeah. When? when? Confidence. Confidence. Yeah. I, I believe in the JV. You're the coach. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, believe. <laughs> Absolutely. When we go to Math 3, we're, we're probably going to see a, a Junker Town. Ooh, okay. Okay. So, Junker Town being Varsity's favorite map, would we be expecting something like a double sniper? Absolutely. We're going to see Sweet Potato on the Widow or Ash. Probably the Widow, depending on how comfortable she is warming up right now. Fair enough. Uh, and, of course, probably Justin Jones on the Hanzo. I, I don't think I've ever seen him play. And <laughs> Ash no longer, well, this is Ash from a long time ago, but mm -hmm. Ash no longer double, head, well, one shot headshots when she's damage boosted. So correct. that would be more of a Widow Hanzo, not a Widow Ash. Widow Ash still works. It depends on what they're going for. So for the one shot capability, uh, Widow definitely works. But if you're, if you're looking for more like sustained damage and overall team damage, you're definitely going to see the Ash. In the past, it's come down to like personal preference for Sweet Potato on like what she's playing, how she's feeling that day. 
So if, if she's running hot on the uh, prior two maps, we're probably going to see some Widowmaker. Very exciting to watch. I, I've seen a lot of it. All right. Um, Double Sniper can have a lot of different tanks. Yes. Uh, notably from the 2020 Grands in Overwatch League, we saw a lot of Roadhog Sigma, but that was more because of the patch they were on. Right. So what tanks would be, be seen from Varsity if they run Double, double Sniper on? Dark double Dark. Sniper, I would say, it goes with Double Shield. And we are actually the game having players is in, in the lobby. but they are not ready, so we will yes. wait. But it's exciting to get this yes. underway. It's very exciting to see. We are seeing Oasis City Center, and we are out of the lobby now. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> I don't think we should comment on the game until it's on, on the full stream, but mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, M might have been an incorrect code. We'll see. Depends on who's setting up the lobby. So in control, yes. some of the at least more dominant comps that can be run are Brawl, dive, anything that can sustain on point and give that presence, mm -hmm. uh, what would you expect JV to be running? JV, I'm going to be expecting a brawl. Okay. Because I, I don't think they practice the double shield on these kinds of control maps because I, I don't think it's very strong. Like it, I, It's not. Yeah. As I was saying, it's, I, it's I, absolutely that's not. opinion. That's <laughs> opinion. No, that's opinion. But I don't believe it's very strong on any king of the hill just because it, right. it does try and limit the angles that the enemy team attacks you from, and there's not very many of those on King of the Hill. Right. For King of the Hill, we're definitely going to see a lot of Brawl and a lot of the six-man Monkey, Devo, Reaper, Sombra rush from Ooh, the Varsity. Reaper, Sombra. Yes, Reaper, Sombra. It's very exciting to watch because a lot of big ultimates that get thrown out, very aggressive playstyle. I don't know how much they're going to run on Oasis. It depends. Uh, typically for city center i believe it's called they run like may cassidy brawl try to take the high ground control that as much as they can and then take the fight from there okay interesting we, we'll see yeah we're, we're, we'll, uh, as always we'll see we'll see very shortly <laughs> we'll yeah. see very shortly yeah <laughs> i'm just i'll definitely keep, keep an eye out for that sombra because mm -hmm. i it really enjoy playing sombra it, it's very fun to play and it's very fun to watch yeah got to keep the opposing team on their toes because they always have to spy check and so it, I check in mind games. Right. The mind games, that level of paranoia that, like, getting under their skin does bad things to players, especially when you have a lot of pressure and you're on the stage. Exactly. It's very different. Yeah. It's a lot of pressure, like, even in, like, ranked modes, but for tournament series, it just kicks the, kicks the stress level up a notch. Yeah. <laughs> One thing I haven't talked much about yet is the uh, support duos that we mm -hmm. have. Is there any, like, comfortable specific duos that they find really strong on? It they feel very it confident. It depends on the comp. So for Brawl, we're going to see Lucio Baptiste. I don't of course, expect yeah. to run anything else. And uh, because for I mean, the one thing I know is Q-Tip is an amazing Lucio, right? He's an incredible Lucio. Like, when, when we look at the six-man dive rush comp, it has very little damage spread out except for the Reaper. And oftentimes, you have other players, like supports, that typically like don't traditionally pick up on the damage. But Q-Tip on the Lucio will often get cold damage in scrims. It's, cr it's crazy to watch. He's, he's out damaging Lucio? I mean, yeah. sorry, he's out damaging Reaper? He, sometimes, yeah. He'll, he'll out damage the Sombra, he'll out damage the Monkey, he'll out damage the Diva. It depends <laughs> on, like, how the match goes, right? Sometimes you have the matchups where, like, the Reaper is super important. So in the, well, mirror, yeah. in the mirror match, like, you have to have the Reaper in burning the Because his primary job is to speed the Reaper and the other tanks around. Correct. Just to make sure they actually are in their correct range to do their damage properly mm -hmm. and they do their job. But... The fact that he can take those duels and feel so confident with that is, from a Lucio player, genuinely impressive. Absolutely, and that's like the job of the Lucio, but once you get into higher level gameplay like this, right, you have Grandmaster Lucio players like Q-Tip, you see a lot of damage and other things coming out, you'll see him like flying around the walls. So it sounds like we're gonna be uh, popping into the game fairly soon. We are in the game, we are starting. Hearing game sounds. Ooh, Q-Tip on the Mercy to start off. Yeah, the, the Varsity likes to play around a little bit with the casters and the spectators. They like to yeah. have Flamehead on we the ball. We don't know what they're going to say. There's absolutely no way that Flamehead actually sticks on the ball here. <laughs> okay. I, I refuse to believe it. We see the swaps over to full brawl on both teams for mirror match. Yeah, we so are we're starting off with Varsity running a Ryan Zarya brawl con. Yeah, it's interesting seeing the Zarya versus the Diva and how they're going to play this. I know that Night Slasher is much, much more comfortable on the Zarya, so this is a good yeah, place for the Zarya can grind up charge, will definitely help burn that Diva. We see control for the high ground. Oh, Varsity. big wall. Varsity taking the first wall, and the Reinhardt goes down immediately. With an even bigger counter wall? 
You have Quirky Turtle trying to get a wall up, just trying to get some some space, getting some pressure to breathe. But Lexi's Varsity is down Varsity finds running push down their throats. The pressure is on to take control of the first point, and the first fight is over. It's been 30 seconds, you already have first fight, and now we see starting to regroup. That's the scary part about Brawl, is one pick starts, and everything goes down. Especially from, a, falls from a player perspective, too. You have, like, you see... Everybody's moving in, you're trying to make plans. One person goes down and you have six people that are like in your back line, like in your home, taking everything you own. It's crazy. Yeah. We see them controlling the high ground. Wall goes up from Quirky Turtle, trying to get some pressure, get into a fight, and Snobbles goes down already. It was a fast pick, and you see Night Slasher already on the point, getting bursted down. Fire Strike takes him down. It's devastating fall from the back. Plankman's frozen and not able to capitalize the pin. Oh, Legacy gets pinned back into the back line, is not able to make it up. The JV supports are not able to keep him up through that, and the fight is over again. Note they how JV already has some ultimates, and Varsity does not. They've already used a couple, so going to this next fight, JV might actually have the ultimate advantage. I think the teams are swapped on our display. Oh, our display. Oh, yes. yes. The red team is actually the Varsity, the blue team is the JV, and we see a three. That makes a little more sense. The two ultimate advantage going into this, and they only need to use two oh, to close fire strike here. When the fire strike doesn't actually find anybody, the shatter is massive. You have three people down. Quirky Turtle goes actually down. Lamp is in, and the fight is over. Two lamps again. in the same room, two walls. Uh huh. Th these fights are just the lethal. perfect mirrors of these fights. But Varsity just takes the slight edge. And crushes them with the domino effects from that. This is what you expect from higher level teams, especially when there's like this much of a skill gap, is these aren't even fights. Like long fights you'll see and they're like very exciting. These are like boom, explosive rolls. Somebody's over. Or, like somebody's dead as soon as the fight gets in. We're seeing them set up for another one. Speed Ant coming in to rush the whole enemy team. Q-Tip is speeding in, Flamehead is in the back line, the wall stops. Big wall. Big wall, the wall goes down because the blizzard is already in. And Flamehead is just going to town on the back line. They're not able to get in. Someone with a two? very big counter blizzard. They're but not able to make it. Can't push happen. that enough. Can't touch the point. They can't even get on the point. That's so sad. They almost split the point on like second fight, I believe. Yeah. They got like up to like 95% before the tanks were able to touch. And this is, is actually getting a lot closer than this is I was a, told it would be. <laughs> yeah, this is a very close game. Yeah. First map going over very decidedly, but I believe the the second map will be good as well. So now we're seeing the swap to D.Va from yes. the JV team. Yes, this, this is an important swap, especially in the main mirror, because when you have the main wall go up and open space, the Zarya just can't do anything. You can try to wall your team up as well, but if you get the Zarya that's able to, uh, the D.Va that's able to fly up and DM the Reinhardt, that's your only hope for actually winning that fight. Yeah, because the D.Va's whole job is to shut down the opposing team's DPS. So in this case, it's Cassidy primarily that they want to shut down, or any closing target that they can cover. Mm -hmm. You have both teams trying to fight for the control of the inside left room. The varsity taking it very decisively. Wall goes up, is not able to split anybody, and they're just holding space, waiting for the point to unlock. This is such a hard place for the JV to fight from. Ooh, JV's Reinhardt is inside, Legacy is pushing in, forcing the JV back on the point and Legacy goes down. JV tries to push into the point, but Varsity was already there. They were already holding the, the better position. It's tragic. You see the JV's lamp go up. They're trying to stabilize, and the Varsity pushes in. There's just so much pressure coming. Beautiful up. coordination from Varsity that we haven't t even touched on yet. Absolutely. You see the whole team moving in unison. It's incredible to watch, especially on these Brawl comps. Absolutely no one from Varsity is offing this at all, this entire moment. Which is beautiful because no one's out of position. No one gets collapsed on by the Lucio speed boost. And it's especially good when they don't need to. Exactly. So, like sometimes it's necessary. Oh, window, window goes up. Out. We have both walls going out. This Wall is a covers lot it. of resources being invested early in the fight. You see the JV trying to wrap around to the high ground. They're not able to get in. I believe they're backing off with the window, just trying to get ultimates out. See if they can take another fight here. Porky Turtle goes down as well as Night Slasher out of the mech. This might JV loses a couple JV. more, and that's and that's big because they're already at 50%. You have someone in the back line trying to get any damage, he's not able to get anything out of it. This is just rough this, for JV. This right is now. tragic. They're already at 50%. They're doing what they can, but they're still Varsity is just showing a clear yeah they're, dominance. They're, they're still down ultimates too. At least in the knowledge of this mirror. No, ab absolutely. This is a difficult position for JV to fight. JV on. swaps the mage to the Reaper though which may help them burn through a little bit more of that sustain. It's going to give them a lot more damage to try to burn the Reinhardt a lot faster. 
Especially if they're not getting value from these JB's also rotating the high ground here. Picks so, up the May. Beautiful someone pick. opens a pick on the May. And another one on the Lucio. This is a big, big shatter coming through. Massive. We, we see JV taking a fight here. Pinnacle's out of mech, just trying to regroup, and you see the point going over to JV. This Beautiful is Cassidy value from someone there. Big for the momentum of JV, because they have to get their foot in the door here. Exactly. If they can hold this, oh, the wall oh. goes up. Self-destruct comes out. Nice, nice slasher, self-destructing for Immediately remake. Immediately DMX. Pinnacle's out of mech again. They might not be able to take this fight. They have to they wait until mech. Pinnacle's back in mech. Both teams are technically even, because you have the baby diva and no diva for the GCO JV. So... Well, are they we'll pushing see. this in, the baby diva? Yeah, Night Slasher is, uh, Flamehead is pushing this in. You have the Window and Blizzard and High Noon going up there. There's a lot on screen. They're investing a lot into this fight. They want Both sides are. Over. Someone is chilling on that high ground, though. Absolutely. He's holding that space and taking what he can. He got out dueled by, by Sweet Potato, though. It is. It's really tragic. Varsity takes the point. We're looking at last fight territory. This is very important for GCJV. As we see the rotations, it looks like they're coming in main. They won't have already. They have a sound barrier. They do have sound barrier. We're going to see that, especially if they're able to get that sound barrier in response to the fire strike. Either window fire strike. Shatter gets blocked by Legacy. You have the beat coming in. Both, both teams land. All the, these stressful fights where there's so much going on, it's, it really could go either way. But the kill feed's coming up blue. You have Legacy and Port Control getting picks. Night Slasher takes out the Baptiste for red team. It's looking like this is winnable. You have Sweet Potato on the flank trying to get some value. JB's got most of their pre players on point, ready for that pressure. They have so much pressure on point. They're forcing them out into these side rooms to where they're really at an advantage. And they don't touch. Oh, that's tragic. That's so sad. That's a tragic C9. They win that fight. They win the fight and lose the point and the game. That's... That's that can't be an easy way to start the series. That's upsetting. That can't. That's one of those things that breaks team that muscles, absolutely especially can. this early in. Beautiful play of the game, Rush, just showing Varsity, Varsity's dominance in this, this setup. Absolutely. JV did pull it back at the end. They were they were adapting. They were getting so much better. and They, they put up a really good that's fight. That's just tragic, I'll though. I'll tell you that. That's this tragic. Is, and this is such a hard team for them to go up against, right? For sure, yeah. Like, the, the difference in the level at which both teams are practicing is just very tragic. I'm that, sure you're proud of them taking it. Very Almost proud. taking a round off they, that. They took, what, two and a half fights on just I'd, the first I'd, map? I'd attribute that round to JV. I'd attribute it to that. I would say they, they put up it's a... It's unfortunate, but it happened. They did a really great job on the round showing that they're still kicking. They're not trying to let anybody just completely roll them. Exactly. So we might be in for a series. Yeah, no, this is absolutely yeah. going to be a series, especially depending on what map we go to next because it is JV's choice. So it is hybrid in this map, correct? Correct. Hybrid is... So I King's mean, Row is definitely one of our options. King's Row, Hollywood. I should know the third. <laughs> I, I think it might be Blizzard World. Ooh, that's a spicy one. No, it's Nambani. Okay, that's less spicy. Yeah, yeah. We we might see King's Row or Hollywood. I don't yeah, think I that the JV has practiced Nambani a lot. Yeah, I don't think Nambani is a very popular pick either. So no, it's it's also a very strong pick for the varsity. So I don't Ooh, I, I don't, don't recommend it. Yeah, they probably won't. Then <laughs> if they can hear me, a little bit of advice. <laughs> hey, guys, guys. <laughs> guys, I got the strats. <laughs> yeah, I'm ex I'm excited if they go to King's Row though. Oh, because that is my favorite map by far. I can. I could talk about angles and uh -huh. high grounds and everything on that map all day. And the King's Row Brawl Mirror is something that both teams are very comfortable on. As they should be. Mm -hmm. King's Row is called the skirmish map for a reason. It's, it's very fortunate that for Oasis they did get the two Brawl maps. As I know, Oasis, I think it's city center or downtown, is one where Varsity loves to run the six-man rush, the Monkey Diva. and that It's just, very strong there, too. Yeah, it's... So strong there. It's very fortunate that they got two points. But that just plays more to JV actually taking a game or right. nearly taking a round. Yeah, absolutely. It's unfortunate they see nine, but nearly taking a round. It's unfortunate, but they do have the maps going in their favor, at yeah. least for the specific maps for that one. So we are going to King's Run next, which is very exciting. Yes, love to see that. All right. I'm. What, what do you expect them to be running? Just a normal Just the brawl? Ex exact same Ryan comp Diva brawl. last time. Same comp? Ryan Diva or Renzaria brawl with uh, Cole Cassidy and May. Okay. It's a very exciting mirror to watch. Would we expect a Sombra of some kind from the defensive side? Would we expect like a Widowmaker even? I don't believe so. 
Okay. It's it's possible that they do these kinds of mix-ups. We, if we're going to see those kinds of uh, off-the-wall strategies from either team, it's going to be now rather than against ASU or U of A because this is where Varsity is definitely a lot more comfortable against these teams. That's true. That's true. I mean, if they do make the risk against any of the other collegiate teams. Right. Uh, absolutely. JV may not be able to, but the other teams are absolutely going to punish picks like that. So if we're going to see it, it's now or never. Well, it's punish or it's risky. Right. Because it could pay off. It could pay off. It's a high risk, high reward. We've seen it a lot in Overwatch Week where teams will rotate all the way back and then pull out the Widowmaker. Oh, absolutely. Keep one person in spawn. Exactly, yeah. Pull something Just smash a teleport or something like that and swap to a Widow. I hope we see that. That would be exciting. I would be beyond delighted to see a Tracer here. Absolutely. I know Quirky Turtle is very comfortable in the Tracer. Both of the J JV's DPS are very comfortable in the Tracer. So if we see them, we did see the swap over to Reaper. But if we see a little bit more creative swaps, Tracer is definitely on the table. Yeah, deep analysis into Tracer is my genuine specialty. So yes. I'd be delighted to see that. Not that I expected. Because <laughs> King's Row has been back and forth between Tracer players for right. is it a good map, is it not? There's a lot of opinions out there, depending on who you agree with. Yeah, because there's a lot of nice blink spots to get you to the top high grounds and really help your team skirmish those important points of the first, especially the first point. Absolutely, especially. But at the same time, it's hard to get there mm -hmm. as a tracer because you can't blink up. Right. You have to blink f some. You have something to be at like a similar height. In yeah, order something to horizontal. Get up there. So. Yeah, especially if you can knock the the diva off or get the Baptiste off the high ground, like that's. Especially for first point on that statue, that's what's going to be one of the deciding factors. For sure, for sure. I can't wait to see this. Yeah, Do you absolutely. think there's any chance they pull out a double shield during Streets phase? Or would that be way too risky? I doubt it. Okay. Honestly, from either team, I doubt it. It's possible, but I wouldn't expect to see it. Because I know double shield's much stronger on Streets phase anyways mm -hmm. uh, than it usually would be. Yeah, especially for first point. But Brawl is just such a king's road style. It's, it's, just so it's almost traditional. Everybody runs Brawl. Exactly. Like, you look at the Overwatch League, it's like whenever you watch anything other than Brawl on King's Row, it's just disappointing. Yeah, it's... Like, it, it makes people sad. It's heretic, yeah. Mm -hmm. you just, it's, it's heresy. You don't <laughs> do it. You, you just don't. You, you just don't run anything else. Do you think we'll see a, a Ryan Zarya? Because that's, that's also just I, I know Night Slasher is very, very much more comfortable on the Zarya than the D.Va. So we, we probably will see the Zarya, especially okay. in that Zarya D.Va duel of trying to get the grab off of whether it gets eaten. It's going to be very exciting. Yeah. yeah. So May is obviously a must, near must pick on King's Row, Absolutely. especially in a meta like this. Especially with all of those tight spaces. You have all the corridors and the, the statue has obviously like hotel and it's all these wall opportunities where as a May player you can just go to town with walls you have basically anywhere you can like throw up a wall and it will get value especially if you know where you know where to put them we do see some swaps from the JV as well we have coop flanked coming in on the DPS and Fiendor on the support interesting all right so uh, I don't know most of these players what do these those players specialize with Coop flanked we're definitely going to see a lot of Lucio Fiendor is coming in on the DPS. I got the rolls backwards. That it's is fine. My, happens. Might be. Uh, but we're starting on Symmetra, which is interesting. And we have... Which means we should be expecting some kind of Symmetra teleport, correct? Some some sort of Symmetra teleport. Which is a right? usual strategy. Yeah, especially if you can you can keep the turrets up, but you can hold the teleporter just like to hold space, right? Yeah. Between that statue. Yeah, they have it set up between the statue and like that. Oh, defensive hotel. Symmetra. Yeah, it's very interesting. Because that helps them control space without risking any mutations. We do see I haven't actually seen that in the competitive game before. Hovering the Widow. We might see opening picks. You have Night Slasher trying to barrage that door as much as Up possible. Top. Goes down to 75 and is immediately oh, swapping over to Cassidy. Okay. Cassidy and May wasn't expecting anything different. Oh, fair enough. Fair nothing enough. exciting. Though, the defensive team is not running May. They're running Symmetra instead. They chose the Symmetra instead. That's true. It is a very interesting strategy. It definitely plays a lot more towards rotation. They get to control the pace a lot better if they are able to get value out of the... Varsity immediately shuts the down the TP. Varsity is just holding the space. This is absolutely brutal for JV to try to push the into. The lack of a wall just... Oh. And we see Fenor and Legacy going Both down. caught outside of the drone. Absolutely. And this fight is going over to the Varsity As Varsity very quickly. immediately just takes the, the space on point. Depending on how much time they have, they may be able to get a regroup. No. No? No, it, they it's, don't, it's they don't not get this. Like it. They don't get this. If they took those picks, like, super Oh, early, Baby Diva. Oh, oh Baby Diva. Oh, no. Oh, no. They're bullying the Baby Diva in the spawn, trying to keep her up as long as possible. She got back again, but... 
I don't think more, she gets out of that. That's more ult charge for the varsity team. They're just oh, gonna keep farming. This her. is a brutal stagger. This is this is what you hate to see. That's a brutal stagger. She's, okay, they finally kill the baby. Oh. They've had their fun. Yeah. And now JV has to choose either to give up all this space and momentum or play down. Stick to the Symmetra though. They are sticking with the Symmetra. I personally prefer the Symmetra. Especially with all these high grads you can TV the entire team to. Makes way for lots of rotations. And JV actually tries to take this fight and they go down with a window high noon. Or I believe it's actually it's called Dead Eye. Very, very clean. Yeah, very oh, clean, combo, quick varsity. fights. Don't expect anything else from the varsity. And they're already halfway through capping second point. It's looking like this is going to be a very fast cap. And Night Slasher is caught out of position again. again. Mech is one. Is one HP. Getting value of the DM. And gets d to the very end. And we're going to see another Just stagger the baby. Though, yeah. Night Slasher is barely able to play Playing the game at this super, point. They don't even have checkpoint. They're on the final checkpoint right now. An aggressive Blizzard catches Legacy out as well. They have Window to regroup. Window Fire Strike takes out the Reinhardt. Night I believe neither team has... Win. Varsity saves their, their rhyme with the ammo, but they won't have a next fight then. Correct. They do not have the immortality, and Which they do not have the Reinhardt right now. Varsity is still trying to hold space, though. We'll see if JV is able to punish it. You have the Reinhardt in, gets frozen immediately, and... J oh. Flame Man is just going to town, swinging. The isolation JV that May brings to this comp is just tearing through this metro right now. Absolutely. The wall separating the tanks. And we see the bomb for Remet is not able to get anybody. Varsity just takes cover, and at this point... Holding spawn. Yeah, Flamehead just, trying to just holding spawn doors, trying to maximize the space here. Trying to keep as much value as they can. They've seen the supports on left side, so they know that they're able to hold that space. Window goes out, window goes out. Too. Tanks are coming right off. Immediately Wait. goes down to the window. Beautiful symmetrical wall. Incredible symmetrical wall blocking off the window, but they're not able to capitalize off of that. You have Flamehead in the back line. Is actually one. And is not able gets to drone, that Gets thrown, gets thrown. Yeah, gets flamed up. At this point, it's just a stagger to see how long JV can kill the clock. Absolutely, they're just trying to hold as much time as they can. Shatter goes down. You have the Reinhardt going down, and the Shatter was the last ultimate points. they could give out. Yeah. These are just such fast, aggressive plays from the Varsity. I wish I could say I expected elsewhere, uh, expected anything else, but this is that aggression. They're taking this very seriously. They don't want to. They're performing. They're performing. Yeah. They really are. And in my opinion, this is a sign of respect for the Varsity, right? Like, yeah. You don't want to see teams that you don't are like, go easy. Oh, we'll take this fight. It's we'll an important day. Let them have a little bit. They're they're here to play. They're here to win. And exactly. that's what you love to see. How do you think their uh, JV is going to react with the Symmetra? How that worked out? How it worked out or how they're going to... How they're going to move forward from that? I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see. It depends on personal preference of the players, right? Like, do you expect like, it's, uh, Symmetra to teleport to the high ground through the choke just to get through it? We might, we might have to see like a Symmetra teleport either. We've seen uh, May wall and then Symmetra teleport to get up to the high ground. Because it's so difficult rotations. to get through that, that choke with Bra against Brawl. And we see Ryan Zarya, Fenor swapping over to the Reaper, which is a comfort pick for him. So we're going to see, instead of the Symmetra, we're going to see just a lot of damage. They're going to try to run over the Reinhardt as hard as they can instead of going for any fancy plays. Yeah, the biggest thing is to focus out Pinnacle on that D.Va. Absolutely. If that, they can D-Mech that, that is a guaranteed fight win for this entire that competition. that gets so much value into the Reaper as well with the DM. It, Keeping that DM management, even if you can force the DM in unfortunate times for the varsity, can absolutely swing fights. I'm excited to see both Lucios go head to head again, though. Mm -hmm. That was an exciting back and forth. It was a speakers. good round, lots of back and forth. And we see them coming out of spawn, Pinnacle holding the top of statue, as well as the entirety of varsity holding back to statue. Remember, no teleport to get through this choke here. They're offing very well. They're going left of statue, investing amp speed. And they're not able to break in. They have the varsity just holding that such a strong spot. The wall comes the wall in. Wall cuts off three. The lamp goes up, and it is not just able to keep legacy up. And the lamp goes down immediately. This is another clean fight for varsity. Yeah. And here we see another staggering baby diva. Oh no. <laughs> the I, I, they didn't live that long this time. They they, that, that, that's good. That's good. <laughs> they're, they're letting them play the game this time. I think the clear difference here is the discipline from Varsity. Absolutely. Especially with old management. Because all the players here are so talented. All the players are so talented. And once you see coordination from a team that most of this Varsity crew has been playing together for a long time as well. Yeah. Like you have Flamehead, Sweet Potato, Red Dawn, and Q-Tip have played together not only this year but last year. And that kind of synergy is something that the JV just can't match as this is an entirely new crew from this semester. Even if they've had But they haven't been hopeless. They have, no, they're putting up 
a very good fight given the right, they regroup and start to push back in. Let's see how regroup this trying to make this rotation. Push through hotel? Go, going through theater. Oh, theater, sorry. Yes. Going through the top right of theater, they're gonna see if they can speed through without getting Maywall. Right now they're holding space. If Sim TP comes up, they're moved down onto point. Massive. Right now taking fights off the point. Ainu comes in, takes down Fedor. Both teams' lamps are up. I'm trying to fight for the lamp, but it's trying to fight for the lamp pressure. Oh, so massive high noon for someone. On the high noon. Might be able to swing this as well as Arya getting a pick on the flame on Flameheads Reinhardt. This is an even fight. This is a scrappy fight. We're going to see a lot coming out in the flash fan, the hammer takes Sweet out Potato Legacy. helps clean up the tank, and I think that's going to go over to Varsity. That was a very good fight. Lots of back and forth. We're going to see it. I'm expecting a lot more of that from the rest of this map. Let's real quick have. note the alt advantage that J that Varsity has going into this next fight. Absolutely. The Shatter, almost High Noon, and Self Destruct, and Sound Barrier, and Blizzard. That's what you expect to see from Flamma, who has a lot of experience leading teams like this. You have very fast and concise ult plans where they're only investing two at a time. And all they needed was that Blizzard. They didn't even need to invest two there. Yeah, they're coming Beautiful on. Beautiful call there. They're looking on five ultimates for this fight. This is an uphill battle for the JV. Very tragic position for them to be in. If they can bait enough ult in this next, next, this next fight, they definitely have a chance of taking this point. If they take a dry fight, try to bait ultimates, they absolutely can. Oh, the flank the shatter. Flank shatter. We see the shatter bomb. And wall goes down immediately. That's well tragic for JV. JV is absolutely not devastating. Not able to recover from this as Varsity pushes into the spawn. And we we didn't even see that coming. Yeah, we couldn't even see it. We couldn't oh. see it. The JV absolutely. Oh, and Night Slasher in the back. Night Slasher oh. gets pushed into the streets as well. And they have a minute on the clock to There's do something. There's three ultimates here. from both sides, though. We're about to hit Sound Barrier. We this, might even get Symmetra Wall here. This absolutely evened up the ultimate advantage. And you see Legacy pushing in. Shatter gets blocked. Tragic Shatter. They are holding space. They back up to the, this back corner from the high dude and the window. Someone is isolated. Oh, and Fenor is isolated as Fenor well. Fenor gets dead eyed. Legacy is getting pressured out. The and the pressure. Oh, the wall. the wall. What a massive wall. In. They have 30 seconds to regroup at this point, and it's looking like it is And Varsity is just happen. standing in front of their spawn door. Varsity is just holding the space with a death grip. And Imposing that iron move. will. Absolutely. We might have to see Kuplink coming in and getting a touch. See if we can get some Lucia surfing into the back line. I think that might be the only shot to touch. That might be the only shot to get any. Unless Varsity can let's Oh, start goes out. comes in from Night Slasher. Beautiful sound barrier. As well as beat for the to engage. engage. Someone gets a kill onto the... Onto the right heart immediately. You have Legacy pushing in. Lamp goes up. Lamp goes up and it's self destruct. This is a lot of pressure. A kill from Sweet Potato. This is a good fight for the JV. Q tip trying to find his duels, but JV is on point. They're giving on their point. They're holding. They have the symbol. They have the lamp. Beautiful lamp for that. This that is their chance to make it happen. And Q tip gets a double kill. Q tip is in the back line. It gets two. This is so sad for the JV. We do have Q tip is attempting to put the team on his back right now. Overtime fight. Night Slash goes up to contest the. This varsity support line is just. Holding this point almost alone. Absolutely, and you can see them giving space and coming back in with that window. And they take it back! And that's Curtains. This was a very good series from The sustain from that that it's support line in that absolutely. final fight was insane. And that's the discipline you expect to see from these teams where they're they're saying, like, all right, you're investing ultimates. We we can JV some had that in there. the bag. Mm -hmm. And that's the bag was then amp windowed. That was such a good fight for them too, but you see I think it was four ultimates invested in one like very short yeah. span, and that's what kills fights. Because if you see more than two ultimates being invested, you have like you can either take the loss and give time, or you can take just, the loss or commit. You, you can commit, or you can just give pressure, right? Yeah. You can, you can amp speed out and then reengage. They had the Lucio going in the back and reengaging, and they just weren't able to keep up with that pressure. Because JV was able to skirmish long enough to get the ultimates they needed, but. The way that it just collapsed on them because Varsity already had those options. They were preparing over it. Varsity already had those options and they were just so ready. Especially yeah. with ult tracking from Q-Tip. Like, they absolutely knew what to expect. And it's just tragic. It's hard to see. But I mean, the players seem happy enough. Yeah, both teams are being good sports. We see shaking hands yeah. on stage. Don't think you can actually see that on the stream. We can. We can. I mean, it's behind us. You yeah. can see it if, they, if they're seeing our camera. It's right behind us. Yeah, There's behind a camera. Us. You see teams walking off, so we're going to be preparing for the next game. It's ASU versus U of A. This is going to be a more difficult game to cast. I have not seen Neither have I, so we'll be both reacting in real time this to their decisions. This is their, going to be a very, very, fresh, uh, a very fresh game for us, as we will not know what to expect. Especially if they're trying to not be comfortable in the brawl. Exactly. If we're going to see more comps, a little bit more spice, especially more maps, too. Yeah. 
because JV and Varsity both have very, I mean, um, there's the same map pool for everybody of like three maps uh, for every single mode, but we do have different teams have different map pools, so we're going to see a lot more play around that as well. For sure. I'm interested to see how the U of A and the other collegiate teams really just overall try and counter GCU's to brawl in the third game. Yeah, especially because they have... Now that they've seen it too. They've, they've seen it in person. They're, yeah. they're here watching. They're here watching, yeah. And they have access to the stream as well, so this gives them a little bit of advantage, obviously. All a little games. bit. A little bit of but advantage. But GCU gets to watch them play the next GCU game. GCU has so. still done a little bit of scouting, right? Yeah. Everybody does that at, this, does. at this level of collegiate play. It's just expected. Of course, of course. As we do see GCU's teams... Packing up off stage. Yeah. Packing up, backing off the stage. And I believe we're going to be going into a break soon. I do believe it is on schedule for a break. We are on schedule for a break. I do not know when that is. We'll see. Play it by ear. Yeah. So in the meantime, yes. what comp do you think is best against Brawl? Against Brawl? I think it depends on the Brawl variant, but assuming you're talking about like GCU's Brawl. the Cassidy May for GCU's yeah. Brawl. So I, I want to try and predict what the other collegiate teams might try and run. Right. It depends on the map, right? When you're looking at King's Row, I don't think they can afford to run anything other than Brawl. Like, I've seen some double shields. I've seen, we've seen Hog of Ball on that. Like, Varsity has had to play that in the Tazbook uh, Overwatch Homecoming Collegiate Series. It was very difficult to play against in these teams that know. But it ultimately comes down to what uh, U of A and ASU's pools are for heroes, and as well as what they've, they're have they comfortable on, what they've been scrimming. Yeah. Because we, we could see anything. When I'm like saying like what's good and what I think is good, this is all from like watching the varsity scrim, and I'm I'm very biased by that style of coaching. That's that true. If we see system. something more sustain oriented with like a Zenyatta or something, do you think we'll see a dive from GCU? We could. It it depends on what they're running. There's a lot of counterplay with those comps. So if we see like a Zen Baptiste double shield and the double snipers, we could see either the brawl and they're just going to rotate into that using like different rotations, like the JV tried to. Through Basically, theater. play doll as if it play brawl as if it's dive. Correct, yeah. They're just yeah. going to try to close that space, amp speed in, and try to get up in their face. The Which is not a bad strategy at all. No, it, <laughs> it sounds funky to say, but it, it that, works. That's what Brawl has to do in exactly. that scenario. Because if you try to take that poke, you don't. You have the right heart versus the That bunker comp is so strong. You're essentially down like three players if you have the May as well. Like You're not getting value from so many people. We're also going to see a lot of, uh, if it's, we're assuming like Brawl versus Double Shield if that happens. We can yeah. also see a lot of counterplay from the Lucio trying to get people off of the high ground. For I know sure. that that's something that Q-Tip has done before. As long as that Lucio doesn't get stunned. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's, that's tragic if it happens. <laughs> I've been on the receiving end of that one too many times in matchmaking. So High, high risk, high reward. You can, you can see the boot, and it, sometimes it makes the fight, and sometimes you slip up, you fall off the wall, and you just die, and you just have to regroup and wait. This has already been an exciting round to watch, though. Absolutely. Those were great games by both teams, and I'm very excited to see what the next one is going to be like. Despite how dominant... Varsity was, JV was still adapting and putting up a fight. Despite the Swapping around from, Var from Zarya back to D.Va, from Absolutely. even attempting a Symmetra back to May. Making swaps when they feel that something is not working. I know some, exactly. teams, some teams can get very uncomfortable with that and they say like, oh, this is, this is the meta, this is what we run here. Exactly, but just play better can't be always used. Exactly, and the ability to adapt is what often makes and breaks these teams. Because that's a core component of the game itself, Overwatch. Right. If you have these rigid players, like you don't really see one tricks as often. That's at what this I was about to say. Play. You don't yeah. see one tricks in Brawl. One trick ponies just can't exist at this level of play because so many teams can say, "Okay, we'll give you the Doom Fist. Like we we get it. You have a Widowmaker. Yeah. You're, you're special. We have even a Ryan team. might have to play something else. Exactly. So and I do know Flamehead is. Somewhat of a Ryan one trick. We've seen a lot of Arissa from him as well. I mean, Ryan, it's not that bad of a character to be the main main character you play. So Ryan's not a terrible character to play, but when you look at their uh, showings in ranked, like if you look at their hours on their profile, it's like almost entirely right heart. We've seen a lot of Arissa. We've seen a lot of Monkey. Yeah. I know a lot of teams at this level do like to run ball, and that is not something that GCU has in their in their toolkit. They don't. They don't. That oh. is not something that they're comfortable running. And we haven't seen an entire map of Ball. Because Ball can be very strong trying to dismantle a, a Brawl comp or a Bunker comp. Either. Ball can be incredibly strong, but it's also, in my opinion, one of the most difficult comps to actually run For successfully. Sure. It, it requires so much coordination with when the Ball dives, what the DPS are doing, what the supports are doing, how the supports are staying alive in the first place. Absolutely. And the D.Va staying with the supports, you have to have all six players on the same page. For the entire map, it's just you see teams that aren't comfortable running it and they just fall apart. Yeah. I do want to go back to the uh, Varsity JV stuff real quick because 
I said that the biggest difference was the discipline right. that the two teams showed a difference in. Mm -hmm. Varsity, do you think the difference was that they were taking such more safer decisions? Yeah, absolutely. Staying back, reactively using ultimates instead of pressuring, but Did pressuring when they needed to because they knew the team was low on ultimates. Not only pressuring when they needed to, but also being willing to give space. Sometimes exactly. there's fights where we saw the JV investing like three ultimates at a time, and when you see those fights, you can't push into that, especially when they have that space and, space and that pressure on point. And if you have teams that try to just go for the hard, we win this fight, like, we hold the line. <laughs> hold the line. You, you see teams that try to hold the line, it, they just fall apart. Yeah. It's, it, it's that discipline, that ability to say, like, okay, we'll, we'll give you this. Because we'll it felt like JV was almost desperate for any kind of ground that they could get. Oh, they, JV was grasping at straws throughout that entire fight. And once they did get a little bit of space, but they did, you did see them holding it, but you also did see the tanks pushing and yeah, almost the like, space that they Especially that very last fight in King's Row, it almost felt like they were celebrating too early. Absolutely. You saw two, three picks going down, and then you saw people just losing position. Because I'm still in awe that the varsity support line was able to bring that back with just the two of them on point. Mm -hmm. Especially that was insane. The Baptiste up on the high ground went uncontested, and then when Night Slash... It, it, it's how strong Emo window is. Uh huh. At that point, Baptiste will one-shot you. Baptiste one shot you, and he did get a solo kill onto the D.Va once the D.Va did go to contest it. And it's because the D.Va went to go contest that by themselves. You didn't have so, the yeah. Lucio, you didn't have the Baptiste supporting them from the low ground, so. Yeah. yeah that's, it's, it's unfortunate. Genuinely some of the most impressive support play I've seen. Absolutely, and I think we're going to see a lot more of that, especially in the third game of the night with GCU versus whoever we wins. We are the seeing, fight. I believe that is... That is you. Both, uh, both teams are on stage. Both cool. teams are on I stage. I wasn't paying so attention. Yeah. <laughs> nice. That's been, that's been going on throughout this entire time. So Beautiful. Hopefully, we'll be getting in soon at some point. We should have been on break then, huh? Hmm? We should have been on break then, huh? Probably. Eh, we get another one. It's we, fine. We might have been on break. It's possible that. I mean, we're just on the on the stream. We're just on the GCU Esports logo. It's possible. We're I don't mind talking. There's people here listening to us. There's right? people here listening. I don't mind talking to myself as well. Let's as you. go. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just happy to get to talk about this game again. I know it's exciting. It's felt almost taboo for the last like <laughs> I months. Know. Like, huh. It's well, also I'm exciting having back. like this in-person tournament. Oh, for sure. A lot of people have been missing this with the COVID-19 epidemic, yeah. and being able to come back and do these in a safe manner is absolutely phenomenal of GCU to do. It's very, very nice to be yeah, back Yeah, so just here. to double check the schedule, this match is ASU of U of A, and correct. the winner of that versus GCU Varsity. Yes, correct. Yeah. So we could see a GCU versus ASU game, we could see a GCU versus U of A game. It just depends on how this next match it goes. It depends on how this game goes, and this is a very important match too, because it's going to define the narrative, the entirety of, it's a short tournament, but the entirety of the tournament as we well, see it. Well, do you think these teams will have a chance at going up against each other in other tournaments, like the TESPA? It's possible. But all of the teams that were invited here were in the TESPA Collegiate Series. And I believe one of the teams was in the Collegiate Star League, Nace. I don't actually know. Please don't quote me. Well, okay, but that, that's an impressive it, title of his. But we, we're seeing all of these teams that are used to competing at this level, so we're going to see a At this high experience. level. Yes, this high of a level yeah. especially. Because we're looking at, like, 4K averages somewhere <sighs> around there. Like, even on the lower end for these teams, we're looking at 3637 high masters teams. And that's still... Very exciting to watch. I've only played in that on Xbox. That's <laughs> all. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've played High Masters games on Xbox, okay. but that's just because they were running out of people to queue. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> it's a little different on PC, but oh, we, for will, sure. we will definitely see. It's also very different when you look at the ranked solo ladder and these competitive teams, because oh, it's yeah. just a different game when you have this level of coordination. We were seeing that from Varsity. Absolutely. It's the, genuinely impressive how strong Varsity was being. Seeing Brawl Comps just move together as one little huddling unit, it's oh, so fun to watch. It's, it really is the definition of death ball. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's why they got the name. And yeah. The coordination once you see dives as well is very amusing. Dive is just so exciting to watch. Mm -hmm. I, it's a treat. Well, that was the golden era of Overwatch. Well, as everyone likes to, to say, it. yeah. yeah. <laughs> a lot of people say that like dive was the peak of Overwatch. I don't know There's if like I agree. like 80% of people who... I, well, this might be even a generous estimate of mm -hmm. the other side, but 80% of people are brawl people. The other 20% are people who like goats, and we don't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> so. we, we have a lot. Goats didn't happen. Exactly. We goats never existed. Well, what is goats? <laughs> those, are, those are animals that eat, eat grass, right? I don't even know what they you're talking about. They eat grass. Yeah, goats? Yeah. We're lopes, not goats. Yeah, we're yeah. antelopes. Please. Yeah, yeah. We, we don't have goats here at GCU. We don't. Well, but, uh, I think there's some goats on campus. There might be some goats in the, the farm area, right? I know there's some cows. 
Well, that's not GC Rod. That's the cow guy. Yeah, the cow guy I think counts as being like on GC though, right? It's not technically on the campus. I mean, it's inside campus, it's but he owns the property. The campus like surrounds it. <laughs> that's fair, that's fair. It's a funny moment. It's a funny moment. Either way, potato, potato. Yeah. I'm, I'm definitely excited to see uh, how these next things go, though. Yes, absolutely. For sure. We're, we're going to see some high-octane fast gameplay, or we're going to see some very slow gameplay in holding that space on the double shield. It depends on what map. Well, even with them at. with the double shield, a lot of it ends up being double sniper, seeing who can get to pick. Uh -huh. And that's an exciting battle to watch. It's very slow-paced if you see it from an outside point of view, but the methodical strategy behind the, the angles they take and the lanes they try and cover is... To and me, still fun to watch. The, the ability to take those rotations for double shield, especially when you have some teams that like to stack up and just like yeah. hold one space. But if you have the double shield taking rotations and the Sigma going with the DPS, it's very common to have the, the Sigma shield for the Widow, and that's just free space for that team. Yeah. I'm trying to think of what DPS we might see from U of A and ASU, but I haven't. I have play. absolutely I just no have clue. We can see anything, really. I'm excited, though. That's that's one of Especially the if we see a Tracer. I've been talking about it already, <laughs> all last game. I want to see a Tracer. Y'all hear me? I want to see a Tracer. Anyways. <laughs> we're we're going we're to see some Tracer at some point. I believe GCU Varsity plays Tracer and Nabani and Hollywood, I think. Because they, they play this uh, pokey dive comp where you have... Monkey, Diva. Dive is definitely strong in Hollywood, for sure. Absolutely, with those the high grounds you can control on Streets, all the Streets, those high grounds. Mm, absolutely. Uh, we see Ash Tracer coming out, usually on those comps. That's my favorite DPS line, Ash Tracer. That is by far my favorite DPS line. GCU Varsity does have somebody else filling in on the DPS, though, so we may not see a Tracer. Uh, fine. It's, it's usually going to see that's fine. running the Tracer, so we'll, we'll see. It's all up in the air. Yeah, yeah. But that's the good thing about this meta right now, is there's not really any one comp that dominates and you see... That's true, that's you, true. You Which is a nice way to, for Blizzard to just leave the, the balance of the game. Exactly. You, you don't have, like, the world's meta from about a year ago, where oh you're God. running Zarya, Hog, and oh everything. God. You don't have a brawl meta. Hog that's ball. <laughs> Hog sig. Uh-huh. That, that was a tragic that was, time oh. to, to be playing. I was rewatching a little bit of that last night just to get myself back into mindset. And that was that was horrid. That, that was, was horrid. That was a hard time to watch. That was a hard time to play. I mean, it was exciting, especially with Ons on the Widowmaker. Absolutely, man's popped off. But especially with seeing all these tanks that you're not used to seeing on the Hog, right? Like the yeah. Super Hog from San Francisco. I mean, he did really well on it, to be fair. But absolutely, I mean, they they won a turn. They yeah, won they, they won grants. Yeah. They won grants, but that <sighs> results speak for themselves. Yeah, I mean, I'm excited to see what, what we see, especially if there's any funky strategies. Absolutely. I'm, ex I'm expecting something off the wall from USA. Because this is the first time I've seen Collegiate Overwatch. Really? Yeah. I've never actually... I've watched Contenders. I've watched Overwatch mm -hmm. League, obviously. Who hasn't watched Overwatch League if you're here? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I feel like if you're here, you've probably seen some Overwatch League. But uh -huh. I've, Contenders is also fun to watch. I've seen some of these similar playstyles and strategies in that. but mm -hmm. And it's a similar skill level. Skill level of contenders, right? Absolutely. You see a lot of these teams that are participating in these tournaments that are also in contenders as well. Yeah. Like entire contenders tournaments being signed up for these. It's teams. basically school year versus contenders here. Yeah. And for contenders teams, these tournaments are just free money, right? Fair like enough. All, all, the, all they're investing is time, and they're able to just breeze through these brackets of especially some te colleagues. That's always teams a treat to watch. Yeah. So, gives us a reason to be here and just easy access to it. Yes, absolutely. I personally, I have seen. Not U of A and a, uh, ASU, but I've seen a lot of the collegiate teams coming together throughout the TESPA series in the past semester. I know in traditional sports, a lot of these teams have very bitter rivalries. For it's example, true. if uh, anyone follows basketball, we had a very intense ASU versus GCU game last year. Mm -hmm. It went down to literally one point. Wow. It's incredible. Right in the last quarter of the game, it was down to one point. My sister's an ASU alum, so okay. I am. I'm very. A little bit of sibling rivalry. <laughs> yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Um, she she liked to tease me about the one point victory. And I was like, it's one point. <laughs> but maybe, maybe if if ASU wins this game, I'll get to have some get to rub it in a little bit. Well, I mean, we'll see how they do against GCU if they win this game. Right. But we got to see how it goes. We got to see how it goes. I'm excited to watch it either way. Even if ASU isn't able to make it out, you're still able to take something home, rub it in. Rub yeah, it I, fully, I fully admit my bias. <laughs> I fully admit my bias. But... <laughs> right, naturally. Naturally, I just... I want to I see more Overwatch. As GCU students and a participant of the oh, yeah. GCU Overwatch program, I, I'm going to be rooting for the GCU Overwatch program in this turn. Well, yeah. 
But we're not going to be like basketball where they just go three points to the opposing team <laughs> when, they, when the whole entire enemy team gets a, a breakaway three-pointer. Basketball so. gets a little toxic. No, it does. It's fun. It's fun. It's fun. It's, it's a lot of fun. It's all in good fun. I think everybody participates in it. It's a very different culture oh, it really to is. the esports as well. Yeah, because we're definitely trying to stay more professional. I, I admit my bias, <laughs> but I'm not going to bad talk ASU on, on stream. He's, he's talking to the camera, talking to people backstage. He's like, please, don't, don't take me off. Yeah, like, please. I'm, I'm being I'm, as honest as I can. I'm being honest. I'm, I'm not being rude. <laughs> There's a difference. There's a difference. <laughs> but yeah, I'm definitely excited to see. Cause we'll probably see more Brawl. Well, to we'll be see, entirely honest, we'll, we'll see probably see more Brawl. I'm hoping we're going to see other comps. I really do. Because I really, really want to see Dive. I really want to see Dive. M mirror matches are fun, but one thing that's really exciting is when you have different comps going up against each other, and it's less of the breakdown of how individual players play it, but the breakdown of the different styles and the way that the teams are able to implement it. Yeah. Because we saw a lot of individual plays for the last game from GCU Varsity. You had uh, Austin the Red Dawn on the Baptiste. You had the Immortality window just spraying people down from I the mean, high that was. I I'm not going to forget that play. I'm just not. That's I'm just not going to forget that varsity support play. I'm just not. Absolutely. And those plays are fun to watch, but it's especially better when you have team plays and teams that are able to coordinate around those, especially yeah. especially for dive, right? You have oh, yeah. The, the shadow dive, the six-man rush, whatever you want to call it. There's a lot of... <laughs> Any kind of ultimate combo that works so well, especially because of the communication. Especially because of the communication. And in that dive, you have EMP, right? Yeah. EMP is tragic for I think to go one of the things. most important or one of the most fun to watch even mm -hmm. um, duels is the Sobra duel absolutely if especially if both teams are running Sobra especially if the Sombras are able to find each other you have both team both Sombras <laughs> are I think it's really convenient when both Invis Sombras just bonk <laughs> and they see each other <laughs> yeah, and both it's like, just like uh, hey what are you doing here <laughs> hmm but especially if you're able to get both Sombras able to find each other's translocators that's when you really see the play well that's, that, that's the goal is to isolate the enemy Sombra before you make a play. Absolutely. So they want to find the enemy's translocator and go, hey, it's broken, team, it's broken, you have six seconds, get them. Absolutely. Especially if you're able to spy check the Sombra. Oh yeah. It's so much fun watching teams that are just paranoid. Yeah, or you can even wait, literally camp the translocator mm -hmm. to see if they either A, teleport, wait until or they get B, the team out. calls out that they've spy checked them. Yeah, absolutely. So. I just I think Sombra mirrors are so interesting. I'm, I'm hoping we see some Sombra play, especially for sure. Especially Sombra into other comps, right? If yeah. you have Sombra into double shield or Sombra into a ball dive. Yeah, because hack is one of the most valuable abilities in this game. Hack and it may not be fun to be on the receiving end. <laughs> I don't think but, it's ever fun to. <laughs> but, yeah, it kind of shuts down your abilities, but the ability may be changing. It might. We'll, well see. I mean, Sombra got to be working on watch too. Right? Yeah, we're we're, we're going to see some changes going into. Yeah. I mean, a watch. Hopefully, it's not a buff. <laughs> Hopefully. It's also fun to see uh, Sombra EMP games that you're able to play, especially. Oh, yeah. You have Sombra throw a translator at the Zen Yada and then... Hack the planet. Hack the planet. Yeah, especially if you can if you can fake the transcendence. Sometimes you're able to just throw yourself in and That's one of the low. biggest baits in this game. Biggest baits in the game, and it's so embarrassing if you're on the receiving end. Because that panic coming out, you, you just have to say, it's like, all right, that's, that's my B. I like, mean, kind of that. it's not embarrassing, per se, because... It is kind of your only reaction to it. Uh, yeah, especially because it's You so just kind of have to either assume the, the Sombra is going to EMP when they get out because mm -hmm. it's a good time for it, or just hard call out that they're going right. to not like ho hold their EMP and just not show up. And especially because it's so hard to find the Sombra when you're looking. If you're playing as a Zenyatta, it's terrifying having <laughs> it a Sombra really on the opposing is. team. Because your only defense as Zenyatta is to frag. Uh huh. That's your only defense. And it's never a translocator being thrown in your face, like from your face. You'll have like right in your corner, you see the translocator, and you have to immediately like snap to it and throw an orb, or you have to trans, or you're just gone. Because the EMP depleting almost the entirety of Zenyatta's health. Yeah. It's just. It's so difficult to play against. It, he, he's left with 50 health. That's two melees. He, someone could literally one-two punch you and you're gone. Two melees, or especially if we're looking at Sombra playing in the six-man rush, you have that that monkey coming in. 50 HP is gone in an instant. Yeah, absolutely. The monkey Monkey landed. could melee jump cancel and he's gone. Yeah, just wiped off the, wiped off the map. So. Yeah, or like a tracer could shoot blink melee. Mm -hmm. And that's it. That's, They're that's just gone. Just curtains for that Zenyatta, so... So is a ballsy pick. He's a ballsy pick, it is, a ballsy it pick. but it's, it's so exciting to watch. So to exciting watch to watch time. and so strong in that double shield. Yeah, especially for like someone like Overwatch League, like Violet. Mm -hmm. If you have Zenyatas <sighs> that are 
incredible aim and you're able to get cross map picks or even just that pressure in the mid fight. Yeah. It's incredible to watch. Especially if you have somebody that's comfortable in the Zenyatta as opposed to like the Brigida or the Mercy. Yeah. I'm I surprised we haven't seen a Brigida. Yeah. Brigida. It's it's not common in Brawl because that's we've well, only brawl, seen yeah. Brawl mirrors. At that's this true. Point. We haven't seen any bunker. Both GCU teams no are just su super comfortable to brawl. That's like yeah. their go-to is like, I don't want to play around with anything else. I don't want to mess around with this. We're just gonna go brawl. It's fair that just run over with a with team. a brawler or a dive, you might might see like a Brig Lucio, or you, you might see a Brig, see a brig Bat or a Brig Ana, that's especially true, that's for true. for double bubble or like a, a Monkey Diva dive. That's true. We haven't seen a bubble yet. We have not seen, we've seen a little bit of Zarya on the Brawl, but yeah. once we get to more uh, complicated maps with high grounds to hold, we will see double bubble, that yeah. double bubble coming in. It's, uh, that's one of my favorite comps to watch, outside of, outside of that. I just, Monkey's fun. I know it's a <laughs> Monkey's lot. Monkey's fun. Mo Monkey is a lot of fun. We're, we're definitely going to see a lot more of the Shadow Dive that we've been talking about than Double Bubble, because ever since Zarya has been nerfed, she's no longer able to hold charge as long as she was anymore. Yeah. And that nerf has just got a double bubble because you're not able to keep the Zarya at high charge and get her into the fights for that crawl. So you can't keep her at extremely high charge. Right. You can keep her at high charge, but the question is how effective is that when she's not dealing absurd amounts of DPS? Especially how effective is that compared to the D.Va and yeah. that trade-off of you don't get to invest bubbles into the back line. Yeah. For double bubble, you have to give the bubbles to the monkey. Otherwise, the monkey's not able to dive as properly, yeah. and the monkey's getting burned, and that's just you're losing a lot of value. So in yeah. my opinion, the D.Va is much stronger. Especially because we've seen so much Reaper already. Absolutely. We're going to see a lot more Reaper tonight depending on what comps. That makes it so dangerous to run double bubble. That's why it's so exciting to see these kinds of tournaments. Like, you don't yeah. know what comps you're going to run. You don't know what maps we're going to go to. It Especially because we don't know anything about ASU or U of A. Absolutely. It all in terms comes of their down teams. to these teams and what where they want to play. Yeah, this is going to be a treat just just see. It's a treat just to be here. It looks like Wild Break. I've not heard anything we'll back, so I'm going to assume that no we No one's told me to stop talking, so... Exactly. I'll talk forever. I, I'm just going to talk day. until people no. are like, right, right, be quiet. Right. Hey, Thank you so much to our casters for giving us a rundown of that game. Sorry for that short delay. We had a little bit of break. How was about that last series? Woo! 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 Good job to our varsity team. JV, you guys did amazing, too. Great show. You guys did good. I was really rude for y'all, but it's all good. They're varsity for a reason, right? It's all good. They did a great job. Anyways, coming up next, we have our next match. We have the ASU Team Black with the team captain of Uriel. Come on out, boys. Woo! Get the in the line. Let's go. All right. They will be facing off against the wonderful U of A Wildcats with team coach of Chad. Thank you, Waldo. Beautiful. You guys are doing good. I love this guy. You guys are beautiful. Hi, Mom. I love you. All right. This is going to be another series. Best of three, as always. It's going to be a great series, actually. I'm really excited to see them because I haven't seen either of these teams compete yet. I'm really looking forward to see how the uh, main tanks go up against each other because that was my role. I love that role. I always love it. We always butt heads against the ground. All right. I'm going to give it up to the casters, but let's get ready. You're going on to the second game. We are back, and we're starting to set up for this map. We get to see it. We get to see the other collegiate teams. We get to the play ones you haven't coached. We don't get to play the game. We get to see people play the game. I wish we get to play the game. That'd be cool. I did give up playing the game to be here. That's true. That's yeah. true. It's unfortunate, but when there's a need, there's a need, and I am a okay with it. I am enjoying being here. Yeah, this is fun. This is. It's been a great time so far. Especially I haven't actually been able to have a like a big conversation about all the different comps and so on. I know. I know. Just all the intricate interest intricacies of the game. All the little nitty gritty details yeah. that when you're used to playing solo queue, or even if you're like queuing with friends. Even if you know them in solo queue, they don't come out. It, yeah, exactly. And you have to see them come out at this level of play. Solo queue is so just mechanic based, mm -hmm. which is great. Like that's, that's, it's great that it's, it's there, because it is a shooter game, right. to be fair. It yeah. is a shooter game. It, it's, it's a team shooter, but it's a shooter. It's a team shooter, yeah. So we definitely saw it, like for example, in the last series, mm -hmm. GCU Varsity versus JV. We saw a big mechanical difference, I will say. I would say so. Uh, specifically between the Cassidy's. Correct. Uh, but that is kind of the entire character. Right. 
That's that's because the stun is there, does, and that right. helps you. That helps you, especially if you catch like a Reinhardt behind a May wall, and you just whoop, uh -huh. toss that flashbang over. Toss the flashbang over or under. Yeah, that's a fun bite. That's a fun bait. That is, it is. It's, it's fun to see the mind games coming out. It's, yeah, Reinhardt has so many mind games with different different characters, especially like yeah. trying to bait the May wall with those chokes, trying to bait the flashbang. Trying to preserve your shield, especially into the Baptiste and the Blue Sail. Because Reinhardt players have to have that mental fortitude of what is the 50-50 that's going to go down here? Is he, is he going to flash up? Is he going to flash down? That is your two options. Especially when you look at this level of play, you have the Reinhardts that are not just trying to track what's going on in the actual, like, on their screen and in the game, but they also have to keep track of their team. Yeah. They have to keep track of what resources they have. They have to make plans based on resources that the opponents have. And it is so draining to play the main tank on these kinds of comps. Yeah, it so really is. So the, the mental fortitude is nothing to be trifled with from these teams. For sure. I'm just excited to see how these things go. Absolutely. I, again, I want to see Tracer. This is my chance to see Tracer. <laughs> I don't know these teams, but this is my chance to see Tracer. Y you may get some. We'll see. I want some Tracer. I'm, I'm hoping for a lot I'm, of... I'm going to be pushing for this Tracer <laughs> the whole time. You're, I hope you know. You're going to hear us like cheering up at the caster table if you, if you see any Tracer. Volume warning if a Tracer comes on. <laughs> Just saying, volume well, warning. May want to turn down the volume in the <laughs> arena, and especially for our viewers at home. <laughs> it's going to be the critical meal. Let's go. Oh, that's what I'm moving for. That's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. Woo. But yeah. Ho hopefully there's no screaming. That's, that's wishful thinking. That's just straight wishful thinking. I know that's wishful thinking. <laughs> I'm not saying no screaming in general. I'm saying no screaming from yeah, right, the team's doing a quality myself. check. I want to point out the... Uh, I believe it's the ASU's captain uh, with the massive mouse pad. <laughs> I was not able to get it, get a. I, I saw it on the on the, on the cam, but on the player cam, but it was mm. like genuinely half my table in my in my room, genuinely half my table, and I'm like, I mean, I played a fairly low sense, but that, oh. that that's a lot of space. And I know that can be an issue for some of these players having enough like mouse space for them to be able to properly track, and we are going into Oasis. I don't know which oh, torp? subset of Oasis this is. We may see a torp. A torp from ASU? Maybe. Or not, U of, not ASU, U of A. A, a torp from U of A, it's, they're still in the spawns. So we're going to have to wait yeah, and see until... I know, I know the torp... I have seen teams run torp on King of the Hill, so... Oh, I was just going to say the torp... Oh, is tracer! Right tracer! We, we could I see, see tracer. a tracer, <laughs> a hybrid brawl with tracer soldier. So we're going to see tanks holding space and a lot of flanking. There's a monkey diva dive coming out from ASU too. Yeah, monkey diva with on a break, and you have the, the tracer with the sim TP to get their get their team to that high ground faster. They're trying to hold this jump pad. The first fight usually goes around the jump pad. You have base here, and you have the monkey setting up for the dive onto the high ground. Tracers are holding point. And we're starting to see the fight break down. Right now, both teams are holding space, but the right heart's charging in. Right heart pushes in. We have two picks coming over from U of A, from the Soldier and the Baptiste at this point. Or, or from I mean, they, they got the elevator. They held the high ground. They got the elevator. They got there. Not only did they get there first, but they held the space more decisively. And now you have the Tracer and the Soldier going into the back lane, wrecking havoc. And you see the point going over to ASU eventually. We have, we have a little bit of That's just purely their, their positioning. That was a better positioning fight. Better positioning, and we're seeing U of A coming over to swap some. It's like the elevator with Brawl, that is just they, impossible. They don't want to take the dive into this. And we see the Lucio taxi in the back. What, what a good teammate. Carry yeah. Carry first team. Swap over to Ryan Diva Brawl. They have the right hand trying to get in and get some space. Pulse Bomb comes out, I believe. We have the window going up, and they're just trying to get in, and U of A is holding it with a beautiful retreat. Iron grip. Beautiful. We see retreat. the window coming out just as soon as the right heart is past the threshold, and they have to back up. I do want to point out the interest of the Honda from ASU. That is an interesting choice. We see the bolt. The tracer gets a pick and then goes down in the back line. And this is an even fight for now, but we see the Diva getting demacked from U of A, and this fight is starting to. Oh, what a beautiful the... pulse on the Rhine. That's two pulse bombs in this fight. We saw the pulse bomb taking out the From Sprout or from the from both tracers? I think from one tracer from U of A, I believe. And that's what you get when you have Shadow going down. Interesting. And that's what you have when you have I mean, the, the Shadow landed? The tracer's uncontested in this back line, especially with Soldier Tracer. If the tracer is able to win the 1v1, the tracer is in the back line for free and is just. Well, note their support line is a Baptiste Lucio. That is a very defensive support line. They can, they can hold their own. Absolutely, the that's a lot of damage, but you don't see any CC coming out from that, and that's the big thing. That's true. Saying. Especially because you don't need to use the CC to get value from it. If you have a Brigida, that gives you value just being with the team and deterring those damage. 
to see Scribe City holding the high ground, trying to Drunk, the zoning dragon strike to keep the try and keep around. him on the high ground instead of now. B comes out and ASU is pushing in through the window. We see a hard engage on the Reinhardt. Reinhardt goes down to a fire strike, as well as a lot of ultimates are being thrown into this fight. Both teams are investing a lot to it go seemed, over the Hanzo. It's, it's just too even. It's hard Beautiful to helix on the tracer. Beautiful helix. We're, so the comes out, find no, finds no one. Even a fight. ASU is holding this point still. Neither team. No, U of A is off of their tanks. They have no tanks left in this fight. This is an even fight in a lot of So ASU is just going to hold the point here. Yeah, Diva no, D Both tanks low. They're holding both. Both tanks gone. Both tanks are down. U of A is pushing it. I think that's, I think that's, yeah. U of A is four. finally that's able, there. They're able to close out the fight and finally get some space to breathe. But ASU is at 99. ASU's All they need is one fight. And we're in last fight territory. And we're seeing so many ultimates coming out and being charged so quickly here. U of A definitely has the ult advantage here, but it's not by too much. U of A has the ult advantage. But, or ASU has the ult advantage, but U of A is, sorry. yeah, AFU is able to play slow and they might be able to just charge six ultimates and just toss six Everything's some kind of variant on University of Arizona. <laughs> just something different. Everybody's A University This Arizona. could be a juicy pulse bomb. We see window coming in. There's ASU so right many is trying there. to hold space, so just swinging on this window, trying to hold space. <gasps> Beautiful shatter! Massive Four man shatter! From U of a, and that's With the pulse combo! Oh, Big so beat. many beautiful alt combos there. And the kill feed lights up blue. They're able to hold space. Take just jumping point. around the corner, the four man shatter from Illegal Panda there. That was insane. Absolutely crazy shatter. And that was big too, because if they didn't have that momentum, like this is crucial every single time. You have dedicated their window and postponed that fight too. That's true. That was a lot to invest, especially for an unsuccessful fight. So I was going to say that ASU did invest three ultimates, which is costly, but so did U of A. It's costly, especially because ASU has to keep track of the ultimates, especially if they're holding space here. U of A because these fights are so much more important for ASU than they are at U of A. Like, they have to hold these. There's oh, what a beautiful dink on a Scrub City's Tracer. Incredible headshot. We see the lamp coming down, especially as I guess U of that's a the bonus of running the Hanzo here. Neither team has land. Zoning. See the dragons coming out. Zoning ASU dragons gets two. Two man dragons. Another well shatter from Panda. Through. ASU is holding this. We're at 76%. Oh, this what is a, a beautiful. Th this team's alt co combination is just beautiful. Absolutely. And this is this absolutely is, stellar. These are the games you Flawless. love to see, right? We're looking at 85% to 99. Watching teams get rolled is always entertaining, but these close fights that are back and forth. Ultimately, this is not getting rolled at all, but ASU has to touch here. No, this or, is, this is back Sorry. and forth. You have both teams that are just swinging into each other, trading blow for blow. You have both run inside. Coast side. Touches point to start overtime. This is a window right here, though. They burn through the tank and the soldier. Both windows are mirroring each other. Panda just holding that high ground, that, that forward point aggressively. ASU has I think this is going to turn into there. Yeah, they have the man advantage. It looks like we're seeing a lot As of ASU comes out, finds Baptiste. Is able to and the Tracers Baptiste. are both still on point. We have the stall going down. We, it's just come down to whether or not they're able to Ponto pops up, gets pressure. a double kill. Oh, that gives him back the man advantage. And it's looking like ASU is just looking cleaning like ASU this is just going to clean up the fight. The overtime is just coming through. Overtime down, they're just trying to hold this. And it goes over to ASU. These what are, a beautiful round. These are the games you like to see. This, right? this, this is exciting. exactly what this I was talking exciting. about. Especially with the variety on the DPS. Especially the Tracer in the back line from ASU getting so much value. Especially because neither team was running a Cole Castle. That's what I wanted to see from Tracer. That's what, that's that's what was, I wanted to see. That's what I've been asking for this whole <laughs> set. <laughs> it's literally what I'm asking for. You, you, Zero th contestment to that, they, that Tracer. They heard you asking for Tracer. They, they really like, did. They showed. They showed. Both, I'm, I'm happy. Both teams are like, all right, we'll, we'll give you your round of Tracer. Because the DPS can't deal with these Tracers right now. There's now May from both sides. There is now May on both which sides. Which is more interesting, especially if we see May Creek. We see the Symmetra coming Cassidy. over from ASU, and we might see the swap back over to Tracer. That's true. That's true. I know it's a lot less common to have. Well, this, this the variant of the map is so much more brawl based. That's true, especially holding this right route. But if you're able to get a Reaper back, in, oh, swapping over to Cole Cascade. So we have Cole, May, Cole and Reaper. Cole and Reaper, May. You have the walls coming. Cole and in. ASU Reaper from U of A. A lot of resources are being invested very quickly, especially with the counter wall from ASU. ASU's demo is down. No. Big freeze coming in. Neither team is able to fully capitalize. Both, shows low. both teams have no Immor, no wall. Early especially. wall. Early We're wall. We're starting to see the teams taking the point. What a shatter! Already charged! Already has a Brought shatter. down four! That's massive. Illegal's down. That's just gonna roll through because of the Reaper roll. And the rest of the fight is just falling over to ASU. It's like a stack of cards. You have take off the bottom one, everything. How did he charge that shatter so fast? That was the first fight! That's what happens when you get the right, especially if you can get a big fire strike and you're swinging in. You see these, the shatter and the window. Like, both teams already have window, and we're gonna see a lot so no, many shatters and those fast ultimates, especially with high ASU is coming up on their 
on their ultimates here. Almost sound barrier has Jesse's shattered Jussie's window. Both windows are mirrored. We have the main wall coming in to block both of them. Decide they don't want to take the even trade. Double damage coming through that throw from both sides. AFC is still able to hold this space though. This is a this fight is looking like it's going to go over to AFC. Baptiste is all things getting a lot of value in. for this healing. You have the right part cutting out. What blizzard. a blizzard! What a blizzard! The blizzard, the blizzard is massive. And what goes down? It doesn't find any final blows other than getting the mech. Self destruct comes out. We have the bomb. No kills. So many ultimates. These are those hectic chaos. Oh, no shatter brings illegal down. What a counter beat. U of A's right heart goes down. And this may be the fight. The ults back and forth in this fight are just being committed left and right. Both right Self destruct is charged. He gets up thrown out. Gets two. Self destruct gets two. And the mech? At this point, ACU is just. And ACU just cleans the, the fight. Yeah. 55% though, ASU is okay How many losing alts went into that last fight? So many, and that's these massive fights that you're generating. It's not even- Both sides decided to commit. This isn't bad ult management either. Not at all. You're generating so many ultimates that you can afford to drop. Yeah, they're not like pushing too many if they're winning the fight. And you get that back. Oh, what a wall. Oh, what a wall. Drizzle is split. Demo comes in just in time to keep Both Dazzle up. Both windows are up again. We're seeing Drizzle so up. many mirror windows here where neither team is able to fully push through. Fire strike goes out onto the Baptiste, and oh. ASU is just holding the space with a them. beautiful collapse from ASU there. They do not want to give this up, especially with the speed boost high noon. Because that brings them back up to almost even time. Because by the time U of A is going to be able to get points, it's going to be 40 50 percent. Yeah, it's going to be an even fight by the time those double windows just keep stalling the defensive side's time. Really. Especially because the double window goes down to whoever is able to control the space better. Whoever gets the yeah. right heart through is able to get so much more value. You have the window oh, go wall off on the main there. Main, not able to double get wall to but it looks increase like the right that show. Split. And the blizzard right under oh, the Diva's nose. Counter charge. Counter charge brings the rain down for the Blossom. Stuns the Blossom out. Everyone in ASU is low right now. ASU is so low. Both Ryube. teams are go absolutely losing so much health. These critical fights, especially it's in this just high, high, point. high percentage. But it looks still like man advantage to neither side. I do feel. ASU has the rape on the supports, and it's look like, looking like they're going to be yeah, able to push that out. I think they get the man advantage. They're tossing another window. They're just, they're tossing these in. Panda the just trying to keep his run on point, but through a window and five people. Oh, what did you guys think that's on that nice baby diva? Um, yeah. But when you have the Reinhardt that's in these fights, especially if you're able to mix in the damage as well as the healing from the Reinhardt. Mm -hmm. you, you're getting a window every single fight, and we've seen. I think we've seen. Because I mean, of course, brawl is up to how much you can sustain that Reinhardt. Right. That's especially that with is the game, right? team. We see Heidi getting blocked through, by the wall. Trying to. Lucid is out though. Blizzard. Oh, what a blizzard! Blizzard is in. A massive blizzard. Self destruct goes out to cover the blizzard. I don't think I've Gets seen. Gets Baptiste. Oh, it, it's massive. And U of A is just gonna roll through that. And the kill is coming back. up red. ASU is going to be. The Baptiste doesn't matter. Point. The death of the Baptiste did not matter. And we are back up to roughly 80%. And it's another close back and forth fight. ASU is almost out of alts here. Swaps to the Tracer to get the touch. Okay, that's interesting. We're gonna see, it depends on how quickly the Tracer is gonna be able to get the touch before they go down. Lucio the gets the touch. Bomb going in, trying to make space. Not able Bomb to goes in, gets Emo. And the, the, the Titanfall the kill on the Tracer. Oh, that's no. tragic. You for, hate to see it. For ASU. Drizzle gets shattered. That might Drizzle. be the opening that Panda goes needs down. to turn this fight. But the Death Blossom comes through and the Diva is not able to answer. U of A is just keeping the man advantage here. Staying strong with the Brawl on point. And ASU holds this point. Showing a slight edge the on the Brawl and it's 1 to 1. We're 1 to 1, 99 to 99, and 81 to 100%. In Still close games. Close games. Still close games. Incredible rounds. Still insanely close games. And it's it's interesting seeing less of the Tracer and more of the Cole Cassie because you did see the Cole Cassie getting a lot of value against these Reinhardts. Yeah, especially in that kind of map with such a tight choke on a point. Tight chokes and that Macri is almost McCassidy is almost just insanely important to that map. Insanely important, especially because you have to have the Reinhardt holding that space. Exactly. If you give up that space, you can window for free and the team pushes in and by then, you can, you don't have any footing. You have the mm -hmm. other team on the back foot and that's just a win. This map will definitely be interesting with both teams still running Brawl. We're still running Brawl, but we do see some variations for the DPS. We have a Doom Wolven Fist is on Doom Fist. He's committing to the Doom Fist Reaper. And we see Cole Cassidy Tracer for U of A. I'm excited to see this. This is especially the Doom Fist from this high ground, right? Well, the Doomfist Reaper might be really difficult for the Tracer to deal with. That's the thing. We have ASU taking the high ground immediately, completely uncontested, and U of A holding back a point. At this point, it's how ASU drops and how quickly they're able to do that without oh, no. investing Blue is, resources. Blue is ASU, red is, red is U of A. The names have flipped. It is, oh, We're going to look at the bottom left above the names. In the end. 
Oh, yes, yeah. That's not like, that I'm just gonna go with blue and red. I'm gonna choose that. <laughs> <laughs> we do see the tracer in the back line almost. Bolt ammo is going out super early. Very early, and the right heart goes down immediately Basically as well. taking the man advantage of the, at the very beginning of that Ryan. That Especially snowball because you have very a, easily for them. You have all of ASU's pieces still up, right? Doom gets focus fired down as soon as the other up. And it's looking like this fight is going to go over to ASU. When you're not able to get the Doomfist into that back They're line, still contesting the point, though. They're just killing the time for ASU on that point. They're killing the time, but they're also... They collapse and get the last three, yeah. They're feeding ult charge at this point. That's true. Well, right? Because ASU is... We see three Already ultimate. got four online. They have th four ultimates online and, and two that they're shattered. going to get in the mid-fight. So this is where you start to see that really good counterplay around the ultimates, especially if they're able to drop two in and only invest those. Because there's no counterplay to Tracer's Pulse, pulse Bomb in this fight, other than... Other than the Diva eating it. Diva eating it or Emma. Eating a Pulse Bomb is insane to do that. We see the High Noon coming in. Right now, we have the Red Team... Window goes through. Pulse, pulse goes in. Pulse Bomb is in, uneaten, but the window... Emma saves Bath. Shatter comes through, is not able to find anybody. And These windows holding Panda the space. barely doesn't die. Bomb goes into the back line. So many alts being pushed on ASU on this high ground. It Panda is, gets just bursted in. It is so hard to keep track of these ultimates. I, I think five ultimates in one fight being thrown out. Yule brings their brawl straight to point. And it still only gets two kills. Red team is trying to keep their Reinhardt alive. The but three is all they need. They have an insane mana manager. I think it's going to just roll back through for eight. Especially with Doom still getting value and still being alive in these fights. The, the Doom Reaper is absolutely lethal if you're able to get those yeah. DPS into the back line. And the fight goes to U of A. Important not to stagger that baby diva. Mm -hmm. Important, because they're on point. Yeah, absolutely. And they don't have a cap, so they can't afford to stagger that baby diva. Especially, especially for this point when you have the environmental kill off to the side as well. You yeah. get so much less value from staggering baby diva if they're able to throw themselves off the map. Yeah. We see... ASU trying to hold this space and throw the Diva Bomb in. The Diva Bomb onto the high ground, trying Top. to find something. Toss it up, see if they can find anything raw. They're not able to get the Bomb Shatter, which is what I expected coming into this. Panning shatter. a two-man Shatter, right shatter in the middle. Found counter two. Shatter, and the Death Blossom with three people! That's massive. That's absolutely insane. What a beautiful Death Blossom to counter that Shatter. And U of A needs these ultimates to come through, especially quickly in these fights. So Perfect hold, coordination. Hold this space and get time on the clock, so that way it's more a lot more mon momentum, and they're able to just... All they needed was those two decisive ultimates. Take, take a breath and chill. At this point, U of A is down a lot of ultimates. But the I'd Echo comes out from ASU. Really? It's the an Echo. It's an interesting choice. Without a Mercy. Might see, I think Echo can survive a lot better than Pharaoh without Mercy. She can, she can. But, but we're, we're going to see a lot more pokey of a style, or especially coordinating dives between the Echo and the Tracer. So that might signal that this Doomfist is giving them some problems, though. That's true. To bring out an Echo Tracer, which is... The way to counter Doomfist. Doom is in, he's able to get onto the Baptiste. As we line. see right there with the Spectre account. Lifts the Baptiste out of the window, is not able to follow up with a kill. ASU's Reinhardt goes down, and these fights are falling apart, especially without the Reinhardt. Just, you can't play too aggressive against that Reaper. You can't. Absolutely. Especially, especially with the Doom being able to just absolutely bully the Reinhardt in the front line. They're able to bully the Reinhardt, but they're also able to bully the Baptiste. If, yeah. if you're a Baptiste and you're just trying to focus on the Reinhardt, you have a Reaper teleporting to your right, you have a Doom slamming down from the left, it's terrifying to the ASU is just down. trying to deal with this, with this Doom fist. ASU is just trying to get it's something in, getting some pressure off of the window, but they're not even they're pushing up, it. trying to find that pick with the Echo. They do push them off of the high ground, you have the Diva Bomb in the back, right in the middle, the window. Gets and ML, everyone's low, Sound Barrier comes back to cover. Sound Barrier comes through, ASU needs ASU taking two fight. picks of the Echo. Beautiful beam from Cooper. Absolutely massive play from Cooper. That's three up for ASU. No kills for them. U of A is still stalling, though, and they still have time on the clock. And they flip the point. ASU is finally, what a beautiful able, fight. finally able to flip. And now we do also have and there's two ultimates coming up for ASU, yeah. Especially They're going to the, have ult advantage in this fight. Especially the copy. Even target. though they just won. There's so many good copy targets, right? Because you can get the Reinhardt for that extra tank. The Doomfist is always a popular choice if you want to ego their DPS. You have the Anyone to help off the support support. line is yeah. insane. You could even copy Baptiste and get enough value with that as long as you don't copy Lucian. That's the thing about these these comps though, is like you could pick anybody from the U of A to copy. Doesn't get anybody, just breaks the shield. U of A is able to get too raw without Finds the, the Cassidy the with the Doomfist tank. Doom not able to find any value. Panic gets charged. Gets a pin onto the... A, a pan pan popping off, even in this fight. We may be able to Finds see three! It. Is that four? I no, that was three. That was three. three. That's three? Okay. And we see ASU able to at least hold this space. Genuinely for impressive. That's a fourth Cooper. And we see just hold that point. If they can time. just stagger this point off, keep U of A off this point, 
that was such incredible. They have the map. That fight too, because they have this map in the back. Uva right is getting back to the point. They're staggering back. They're staggering back. Uva is trickling in. You see the high take. We have the replicated ball, the window just to increase that stagger on the point. Uh huh. Beautiful 2K from Cooper. Just to close out this series, the entire team of ASU on the point. Flashbangs the Reaper. And it's looking like And I think it's going to take down. And it. yep. ASU takes the and first map. To ASU. Every single point were such good fights. 99, 9, like 99, 99. This is for every top level point. Overwatch. This is, these are what you like to see in tournaments, especially when it's this close. <sighs> what a game. It's exciting. Yeah, yeah, that was back and forth and back and forth. Both. Well, all three rounds yeah. were at least 80% for both teams. The, the most dominant performance was on second point with 81 to 100%. And Ooh. that's still close, right? Like, nobody's, it's nothing to sneeze at. Those shatters. Oh, absolutely. Can the, we talk about those shatters? Can we talk about how many shatters these teams are able to get? Land. <laughs> not only get blocked, like, uh, we're not seeing too many blocks come out of that. Yeah, true. We're, seeing, we're really not. We're seeing a lot of pressure coming out onto the Reinhardts, especially from the Cassidy and from the Echo and from the Reaper, especially if Diva's able to. It is not hard to heat the energy up when these teams are literally doing the job for us. Absolutely. The, these teams are doing our job yeah, for us pretty much. Their plays are keeping the energy alive the, with the, between these sets. These games are just the easiest to cast because there's, there's so much going on, it's hard to keep track of, so you could just exactly. pick anything and talk about it. Because <laughs> we were absolutely pulling apart Varsity's just pure diligence Absolutely. with their play style. Their communication was a beautiful display of just how they work as a team. But this, the, this is competitive back and forth. The clean play with the discipline is always nice to see. Right? Yeah, it's, it's clean it's, to see. It's always a treat. Especially from teams where you know they know what's going on, right? They, like, they have something to prove here. They're showing like, we can, you know, we can we can keep up at this level. But you have teams that are just going blow for blow, back and forth trading with you're getting fights with like five or six ultimates being thrown in from both teams. Three <laughs> ultimates per team, and they're charging so many more. I just, oh, I the tracers, <laughs> I got tracer, <laughs> let's go. Hey, don't, uh, don't, don't hold your breath, we may get more tracer. That's true. Especially That's true. on this That's last true. round of Oasis. That's true? Well, no, we, we're that, done with Oasis. That was the last round That was Oasis. the last round. So I we're going on a hybrid, which means King's Row. I know what's going on. Do yeah. I get to see tracer on King's Row? You well, might. You might. Might, not might not be King's Row. Might not be King's Row. Right. We, we do have them, a pool of Let them pick a map. It's just popular to pick King's Row. Right. We're, we're going to see what they end up pulling up here. It, and it comes down to both teams' preferences, right? It this really is does. a big pick for the losing team to be able to choose the map and be able to dictate the tempo of this next map. Because they need to U of A gets their, their pick. Right. So if it's something like how GCU is comfortable in Junkertown, mm -hmm. that would be insane to just have them like whip out Nepal. Right. If, if they're able to, to whip out a comfort pick that they know. Because the everyone team. knows King's Row. Right. That's the thing. Is everyone knows King's Row. So you have to be confident that you're going to outplay them. Everybody's practiced King's Row a little bit. But if yeah. we're seeing, like, other Nimbani, like, that's what, one of those other mountain teams may not be, be practicing nearly as much and may not be as comfortable on. So we'll, we'll see the counterplay coming out from the whoever is deciding the maps for the teams. Yeah, I'm excited to see how this next game goes, too. I was going to say team captains. I don't know who. I don't know who the team captains are. We don't know names. That's the first time we're seeing them. I'm sorry. I don't know any of the names. I'm not fully able to see the names. The name that's sticking out of my head right now is Panda. Illegal Panda. Oh, absolutely. insanely just a brawny Reinhardt plays. The absolute pinnacle of just cornerstone for the team. Absolutely. And when you have such a strong right heart and such a foundation, you don't need the rest of the team to step up and make these hero plays. As long as he had his bat behind him, the man could walk in and just 4K. You, you've got the bat and you've got the diva with you. That's all you need. You it really, just, that, that is all you need. That's you, really all you need. You can just walk over the opposing team. They're not going to be able to do anything about it as long as... Because like we were saying before, keeping the Rhine up and sustaining him is the core of Brawl. That's how Brawl is played, right? It's whichever yeah. Reinhardt goes down, that's usually how the fight goes. In, unless you do see a hero play, but the hero plays, the hero plays. Well, because nice the key to that is the way the supports movements. play around him. Right, right, right. Whether you commit Immo in the fight or save it for someone else, usually the bat will commit it to the Rhine because it's so important. Because the, the Rhine is like one of the most important pieces yeah. of the brawl, aside from maybe the Baptiste, right? Or, or like the other. But an aggressive Immo with a speed boost. Absolutely. When you're able to, especially if you're able to get like a win. Because I think that's it. how it, Panda was playing so aggressively into U of A. Mm -hmm. It was just, oh, so clean. And the bat damage through those windows, like, <sighs> even if you're not seeing, like, triple. So many mirrored windows, too. Yeah, so, so many mirrored windows. Not only were there Doubling windows, the damage from both sides. There were mirrored windows where one team was able to decisively push through and say, all right, 
no, this is our this is our space. You can't have it. Yeah. This is this is my window now. And I remember there was one window. I think it was library where uh, or university where both teams had the window on the choke. Correct. And I think it was ASU that pushed through. We got a three K immediately because they weren't expecting them to push through. They were going to wait out the window. Yeah, that pressure. If you're able to either beat or commit lamp into the push through and just amp speed through, you're just taking away an ultimate. Exactly. And that's a big resource to be just. Throw it, either throwing away or taking away from the opponent. Because Lamp team. allows for so many aggressive plays, as well as defensive plays. That's obviously its primary use. Right. Because it's Immortality Lamp. That's what it is. Yeah. It's an Immortality Drone, so you're going to use it defensively. But being able to properly utilize the offensive capability of, a, of a, an MO mm -hmm. is so valuable. Especially from the whole team, too. Because if you're looking for a shatter, you're able to... The D.Va damage on shield, if you're able to get it through... We saw it in the high ground in that last map. Uh-huh. You see just shredding Both shields. Both Immo's going straight to the middle of that high ground. Mm -hmm. And then the Ryan's just hammer battling until they can find an ult. It's, it's both teams just going at it until one team comes out on yeah. top. Yeah. And these chaotic fights are so difficult to keep track of because you'll have just <laughs> this There's pile. So many, so many alts. This massive pile of 12 people with ultimates being thrown left and right. And you have the bomb going up and you have the window. And the I'm struggling to hear the alts go off, <laughs> man. I'm, I'm just trying to listen and be like, did, did a shatter just go down? What, what just happened? I'm, I'm, I'm looking visually, man. I'm not even like hearing the shatters. I see the cracks on the ground. I'm like, there's a shatter going on. You see, yeah. the, you see people going There's down, so much like, going on in that. It's, it, it's really just clustered. Yeah, there's so much going on in these fights that you can lose the Reinhardt. But the thing is, the method behind the madness. Right. The method behind the madness is what's really allowing ASU to step up and have barely edged out that map. And especially the discipline and the chaos. When yeah. you look at GCU Varsity versus JV, it's very easy to have discipline when you have a very one-sided game. When you have, you know what they're going to do and you have people playing very predictably, it's very easy to play around that and not over-invest and make sure that you're not making any mistakes. But when you have everything flying in your face. You have ultimates just hitting the wall left and right. It's so much harder to keep track of. Yeah. It also makes it harder for the sports to ult track as well, which makes fights much, much more difficult. Yeah, especially p pitting that onto uh, the main tank or the support mm -hmm. to actually keep track of like, as a captain or a game head. Right. That's just so difficult and to do so much. How do you plan for these fights? Exactly. How, you, nobody expects them the to The coordination like needed to just prep in advance Mm -hmm. Be where you need to be, right at the right time. Just knowing what's going to happen in the next fight. Right. That's the mind games that are played so so minutely too. Absolutely. The insane microplays of just these mind games positioning wise. And this aggressive style may not be something that either team is necessarily. We're going to King's Row. King's Row, baby. We're going to King's Row. We're going to see another very aggressive, fast brawl game, which I am very excited for. You no, know King's Row is hmm? a heavy rhyme map. It is a heavy map. And we're map. just praising these rhymes. Yes, absolutely. Not just Panda. Especially Panda. as we're going to see different variations on the DPS, right? We're, we're seeing a lot more creative picks this game than I was expecting. I was just expecting. I'd be extremely excited to see an Ana for the support line here. Ooh, that would be exciting. I believe it's red team attacking first, so they do not have to actually come in. I think the names are right now. I think the names are right now. The names blue, are right blue was ASU now. last game, so I think they drove right I'm just not, not even going to try it. Fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Understand. <laughs> Though, yeah, I do, I like what we're seeing from AC, but they're on yeah. offense first, so they might swap around. They, they might, they might be around. playing games with us. Yeah, they might I, be. I know that's something Varsity likes to do. So. Fair enough. We, we will say, we, we do have... They're focusing on ASU's defensive lineup right now. They're doing the same exact composition from the last map. Going into a brawl with a May, trying to hold that joke. As we're going in, they're we coming out of the farmers or pharmacy. This is interesting. Soldier Desert Pharmacy? Yes. Soldier Pharmacy from U of A, and this may not be something that get ASU is necessarily used to play. So I know a lot, a lot of teams that spin this are used to practicing like the Cole Cassidy main mirror match. This may be taking them out of the comfort zone for an advantage that U of A wins. Note how vertically this far is playing. Absolutely. Oh, what a wall on that ride. The wall comes out, and the far goes down as well. They're able to line. save. Oh, what a pick on Cassidy. Though. And once you get that opening pick, ASU is Both just able down. to get their Reinhardt into the back line, and we see U of A retreating into the spawn, because they are not able to hold this space. I'm not going to attempt to announce this player's name, but I9. I9. I'm assuming that's an I. Um, I think that's an I. I9. I I'm just going to call him I9. We're just going to say I9. I'm just saying he is showing a dominance right out the gate for this map on this Cassidy. Absolutely. And Pure that's, hit scan, clicking heads. That's so important with the off-the-wall uh, pharmacy, because you have to have the pharmacy there getting that pressure, otherwise it's just a dead pick. 
as well. We see Note the ultimates are coming down. online here too. We see the anti-nade coming down and getting value on the Cassidy, as well as the window holding in the choke. Neither team has Immo anymore. Neither team has Immo. Collapsing into the main. They get they get Cooper on the main. U of A is finally able to get two picks and they're in the fight. Diva gets pinned. We're seeing both teams that are going down to low, a lot of health, and we're finally getting the final point with the Reinhardt duel. Oh, Cooper. Maywall comes in. They're able to retreat to the back of Hotel. Neither team is really able to get their foot fully in the door. Look fights. how oh, I was about to say, look how safe I9 is in the back, but a Nano Reinhardt with a Shatter goes through. Another the counter three. Shatter, shatter Diva Bomb goes through. ASU pulls this map right back into their hands. And ASU has to oh. overinvest. We're seeing four ultimates because the Lucio beat had to come through in order to nullify. But they won the fight. They won the fight. They, they did. won the fight. So was it worth it though? We'll see. If they do ASU have doesn't have any alts online yet. They're about to have bomb. They're about to have bomb, but they do have a lot, a lot more ultimates that are close that they're going to get. That's true. Whereas ASU or the blue team just has that window blizzard. It's ASU. It's ASU. It's ASU. It's ASU. Oh. It's ASU. If they don't, <laughs> if they don't get value out of this window blizzard, they're playing without any ultimates. Blizzard's out. And it, the blizzard it gets the mine. Blizzard's out. It's big. Oh, that already brought down four, That's five. An incredible blizzard. That's how you play this brawl. This is so important. That's how you play brawl with me. This momentum is what's keeping ASU in this game, holding this point. Just note how they severed that advance and then threw down the Blizzard game. Because the Reinhardt's already easy to shatter, and you have, they're already 50% above them. They're getting so much value. They only use the Blizzard, they still have the window. So the alt rotation from ASU right now is beautiful. This is phenomenal. I think it's the reason they're holding it. You see Bomb going into the back, and not looking Bomb for the back. Panic getting a 3k! Window with fire window strike. Fire strike. Four! Almost five. That's why you Almost gotta, five. You gotta be careful about those bombs because you throw the bomb into the back line, yeah, team fine. knows fine. they can just win the fire strike fun. for free. Panda's <laughs> walking in as if Rambo had a hammer. Exactly. And he's just having fun. He's feeling good swinging his hammer all over the place. Though, he does need to get back soon because U of A is going to take advantage of his longer respawn time. We are going to see the Lucio Getting taxing. through the choke early. Oh, the Lucio's not taxing. But the Reinhardt is already back, so they're able to get value. Oh, doing something a little sneaky with the uh, uh, I don't too loud about that. I don't too loud about that. They might hear us. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Oh, what shatter a shatter with the high noon! Gets, gets two. To two. And this is another fight going decisively over to ASU. They're being Remember what I was just talking about with the ultimate rotation? And that's this is a beautiful communication for the ultimate rotation here. Not only good ult rotation with the discipline to only invest two, but we're also seeing in less great than 20 tempo. seconds for ASU to touch the point. In these brawl mirrors, we have to touch the point. Gets the ultimate off first wins, and we have a pick going over to U of A. This is a big opening pick. They might be able to snowball this in into an entire fight win. We do have the Baptiste in the back line putting up the window. The so many bear. alts going out. Sound barrier, Blizzard, Nano. Bomb gets two from ASU. Bomb gets two. They're down a lot of resources. They don't have beat or the Getting ready to collapse for the full hold. Reaper has no wraith and he's in the Reaper gets collapsed. He's out of position. Two. And this is a full hold. And that's a full ASU. hold to start King's Row. This is an incredible What a beautiful provoke. display of just pure ultimate dominance. Especially coming back from such a close series. Right? True. Like, it was so Well, because King of the Hill is more of a scrap, right. to be honest. King of the Hill is really just a scrap. It's a death match. ASU is showing that they're not here to play. They're here to take names, and they're... ASU multiplied its brain cells in that Ab match. Absolutely. And they're th that aggressive play, when they're able to just say, like, all right, we're just going to win these fights. Like, I, I don't think they even consider in the back of their mind... Because I want to point out, between the Window Blizzards and the Shatter, shatter Bomb, Shatter... High noon. Mm -hmm. We saw so many good communication plays. Good communication plays as well. Might as just be me being communication. communication oh, player, but <laughs> this, this, just the pure <laughs> synergy between these players that is allowing them to just effortlessly communicate these plays right. and just pull them off is amazing. As well as a lot of different variation of the ultimates, right? Like yeah. every, everybody knows that window fire strike is the thing, but when you have the blizzard coming in and the shatter from a different angle, that's when you start to see these really creative plays. It looks and like we might be seeing another farm receive from ASU. Yeah. Looks like we might Not be U of seeing a. a Torbjorn as well from U of A. Ooh, this will be an interesting way. This will be if this goes out the gate like it is, this will be interesting. And the Torbjorn is a decent answer to the fair. If you're able to get the turret to where it's good line of sight on the high ground. The question is, will they stick to the widow? That's a very good question. We may see a couple shots, but it looks like nobody's really peeking that window, wanting to play with the Widow. We see the Widow peeking and taking a couple of shots. How long are they going to stay on the Widow, though, right? How the Fire of Mercy is committing. How much time do they actually commit to this window? And we see Cooper swapping over to the Far trying to target that turret down. 
we gets are, it. Gets we are it. still seeing like a non-traditional dive though. It's, it's not not anything we're used to seeing. Panda gets isolated in the back line. And the right pushed up on in the back back line for U of A. He does go down. Reinhardt doesn't need to stay alive at that point. He's got three kills. Absolutely, but that is a big pick for ASU because they're able to the play a lot faster. They're able to get that fight going before U of A. Especially yeah. with the Reinhardt coming back. Pushing back in already with Panda trying ASU to take advantage of the lack of Reinhardt. Yeah, ASU front. is trying to push in and take as much space as they can. They're already back though. Drizzle back though. What a wall from U of A. A phenomenal wall. Phenomenal off wall. The, the pressure out there. Reinhardt their resources. Able to regroup with the team, but they're still pushing them back into the spawn, and this is so much space that they're able to hold. So many angles thanks to this far mercy. No one's committing it. We're seeing more. Uve walls out the main choke just to falling off the main choke, taking a breather. Yeah. Making sure that they have all of the resources in the window. Both. Double window, double window Here's barrage. Coming out. And ASU <laughs> loses two. This is a big what a fight push for from a from Chance on the D.Va. Two going down from the window fire strike as well. Especially with these, like, oh, oh. Nice what a charge. <laughs> what a charge. You what a to, pin. You love to see the pins coming out. Especially when playing Reinhardt. Like, it's so much fun to swing. Those blind pins hurt, man. But, but those pins, those that's... Those blind pins hurt. That's, that's a tracer player. That's those blind pins <laughs> hurt, man. Especially when you're around it's the It's demoralizing. Corner. You turn and you just see a Reinhardt, like, in your face. Though, they have swapped to the double hit scan ASU. There's no longer the Farm Mercy. They are still on the Mercy. That's true. But they're on the Cassidy Ash. Or no. Cassidy Ash. haven't seen Ash yet. No. We'll see how these changes come through. We have the Blizzard going in, freezing the right heart, as well as a flank in the back line. That's a big Blizzard. Bull tanks are frozen. Nobody's quite able to Bull tanks die. barely survive. Bomb is going Bomb goes top. through, gets D.Va and the turret. D.Va's down. Didn't have any. Shield's down, too, from U of A. Yeah, the right heart. Reinhardt is in the back line, but he's ASU low ASU pushes up with a 5k. And ASU is able to what push a collapse. and take the fight decisively. What a collapse. And that's the thing about these full holds, is you, you can win ASU the only fight. Pick. ASU only yeah. needed one or two picks, and then they're able to get that one tick is so fast. My brain was already going to streets phase, and I was like, oh wait, absolutely, they full held. Mm -hmm. What an impressive dis just display of pure understanding of the game, really. What a great game. So that, yeah. that full hold was panic up by the game. Incredible. Panic up by the game. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, stop, I'll stop making Panda MVP of this game. That's true. That's true. <laughs> I think he is, though. I really do. Big, big two-man window fire strike. For I mean, he's being enabled by his team, but that's how you play with Orion. But that's really how you play with Orion. It's, it's not just the enabling from the team, but when you have a Reinhardt that knows how to play with a team that's enabling him, that's when you see players really thriving and shining on these kinds of stages. Yeah. And I believe that's that's the, already the series. That's the series. That's that was dominant a by fast, ASU. Fast, decisive series by Arizona State University. Which means we get an ASU GCU game. That's true. That's going to be the exciting game. That's the that's the winners finals of this. Yeah, absolutely. And especially with such a dominant performance going into it, how do you think GCU's varsity crew is feeling? They might be a little intimidated. A little bit. I mean, you know them better than I do, but they might be a little intimidated. I would be a little bit intimidated. Yeah, if I were in their shoes, I'd be intimidated. Especially seeing all the different ways that they're getting created. The pure right? coordination on that defense from ASU, the, the that would intimidate me. The coordination and the, the ability and the willingness to try new things, right? Yeah. The Torb on the Brawl, because they know they have to hold that space, it didn't get... Wait, the Torb was A of E? The Torb was U of A. The Torb was U of A. The Torb was U of A on the defense. I know what's going on. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, but, I know. But, but the pharmacy brawl. Both, both teams are willing to get creative and try different things. And yeah, both teams pulled out a pharmacy and offense. Yeah. They ended up swapping off of it. But that's, that's true. I it's, think the difference was that ASU is more willing to do something more comfortable or do something more progressive mm -hmm. in their team composition choice. Because if we notice, the U of A on their offense held the farm mercy much longer than U of A did. Absolutely. They kept trying to commit to that playstyle because they were trying to play so vertically and get above the Reinhardt shield mm -hmm. and then prey on that barrage. ASU didn't even get a barrage. Yeah. They just said, oh, this is going to be hard. We'll it, swap. Especially from ASU when they, if you, it's, it's good to try new things, right? Yeah. You don't want to just beat your forehead against the wall and try the same thing over and over again. And the willingness to swap when, especially as a team, if you decide that it's not working. Yeah. That's, it's absolutely Because well, everyone's seen that in ladder. Everyone's watched that one one trick just beat right. their head against the wall. And they're yeah. like, oh. It's so hard to watch when you can, you can see teams struggling. Like, from the game perspective, you can see teams struggling to communicate, especially when you have 
you have a fair or you have a tour where you don't like know quite how to answer these DPS mix up or the Doomfist on Oasis. Yeah. Absolutely tragic. The Doomfist was doing so much work. I'm I, no, anyone who knows me in Overwatch, I hate Doomfist. I hate Doomfist. Naturally. I hate Doomfist. Anybody that plays against a Doomfist hates Doomfist. I'm a Tracer player. I hate Doomfist. Anybody that plays Doomfist loves Doomfist. There's absolutely no middle ground in my opinion. But Doomfist can so easily just absolutely bully a Reinhardt. A Reinhardt, and especially that pressure in the back line. Yeah. Even if you're not able to get kills, seeing the Doomfist on the high ground just staring at you menacingly, knowing that he wants you to step into that space that th their team is controlling is terrifying. Because correct me wrong, but that was uh, U of A that was running the Doomfist, right? I believe it was U of A. ASU was running the, the, the Tracer Cassidy, right? ASU... The Tracer Echo. Yes, yes. Yeah. They, they ended up swapping to the Echo. Tracer Echo to try and counter that Doomfist. And they were able to counter the Doomfist effectively, as we were able to see... Well, eventually. Eventually. I think they learned from that mistake, though, in the King's Row game. I think that's what happened. Absolutely. Is they stuck too long to try and counter that, that uh, Doomfist. Mm -hmm. And then they were like, well, we don't want to repeat that and uh -huh. getting that close. We want to just close it out. We'll, we'll get out of here. And that's the discipline that I like to talk about in these teams, right? Yeah. The, the, the discipline of saying, like, this isn't working. We need an answer and being willing to try new things. Yeah. Especially I'm still calling Panda the MVP for that series. <laughs> I, I'm, my mind is not off his shatter plays. Those uh -huh. were insane. The, the main tank plays as a whole. Because it was an actual MTD. It was big shatters going back and forth both ways, too. It wasn't just one team hitting shatters. You had shatters flying yeah. left and right all over the place. It was insane. Very aggressive plays. And that's these Multiple just straight 4Ks enabled by his shatters. Uh -huh. And it's the mind games between the main tanks. It really is. It's it's those those. It's games. who's going to have a barrier up, who's not, when, and right. how, and and whose team is going to be able to like truly pressure the barrier as well. Yeah. You don't have to break the barrier. You just have to get it low and make you the get to drop scared. it. Yeah. Yeah, you're just going to drop it. So we, especially with that Cassidy flank. Oh, shatter. absolutely. That yeah. was beautiful. That was a phenomenal. I just shut flank. you up so you wouldn't spoil it for the. Mm -hmm. I, team. Do, I, I, do, I do know that I believe they're wearing soundproof headphones. I, I'm not sure. They have the personal headphones, so. Oh, that they might. I think they have personal headphones. They can hear us. <laughs> Which means they might be able to hear us. That's why I was like, I don't want to talk about that flank. That's true, that's true. That's that true. could be devastating for uh, the team that's trying to use it. No spoilies. <laughs> yeah, no spoilies, no spoilies. <laughs> and we do see GCU's varsity crew taking the stage. Ah, oh, beautiful, beautiful. Those are our boys. And this is running through very quickly. Hey, I, quick question. Question. I think I we're ahead of... Well, because th these are blowouts. Yeah, I do. Yeah. These, these games are, are blowouts. Yeah, it's fast game. But this game... This, this is going to be a good game. Because Varsity, for lack of a better term, kind of bullied JV. They did. They had a fight. They had a fight. They, they had a fight. I don't know if I want to say they bullied... That's fair. It might just be my uh, lack of if, informative if, language, but... If, if, I, I think bully has too negative a connotation as well because they weren't doing anything disrespectful. They weren't... That's like, true. They weren't, ba they weren't BMing. They weren't teabagging. They weren't spraying on bodies. They, were, they weren't doing anything like that. Except for the staggering of the baby diva. That was... But that's strategic. That still gives them an advantage. That's true. That's not disrespect. That's just playing the game. If you don't stagger... That's just absolutely tragic <laughs> that's, for JV. That's something that's just a necessity at this level yeah. as well. Because if you let the D.Va get that much value, like that's... Because as we saw, it gave them so much space on that King's Row Street space. Mm -hmm. It literally got them all the way to the checkpoint. And then, scared, JV tried to initiate. Yeah, absolutely. Did we? Oh, you saw the D.Va to the... I, I was going to say, like, did we get to the King's Row Street space? Not, not in the last game, no. Yeah. But I, I meant the, the GC yes. Varsity versus JV game. Yeah. very decisive games coming out, though. Because we had... his full holds both ways on King's Row, right? Um, For... For both games. For GCU, uh, Varsity, JV? Yeah, full, full held in the first point, right? Mm, I don't think so. Didn't they got all the way through the game. All the way through the map. Didn't get to streets, did they? They did. Wow. <laughs> 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 they definitely got to streets. <laughs> We're seeing a lot of Overwatch. Uh, There's a lot of Overwatch going on, yeah. We, we just saw Kings Row map, and I'm talking about the previous Kings Row game. So that's fair. That's Especially fair. when you're not able to distinguish between like specific players. Oh, and if yeah. you won't, like I know everybody on Varsity and JV for GCU personally. Yeah. So it's, it's very weird. It's nice for me because this is like the first time I'm seeing a lot of these players play. This is like a fresh slate for you for yeah. everybody. You don't have any like preconceived notions going into it. But they're playing so impressively. Incredible play from teams all around. As someone who's used to trying to coordinate these teams, like helping them mm -hmm. get to working with each other. Absolutely. ASU is just a dominant example of what a team should communicate like.
Because that's such a big barrier for teams like at this level of play. I just wish I could hear their comps. Oh, absolutely. I would love to listen in on the ATU's comps. That may, be, may get a little hectic. That's true, but we can't do that. Th because those comps can be very loud and very chaotic. It's college kids. I, I don't know if we would it's really... College kids. It's college kids. It's college kids. I don't know if GC really wants that on this That's stream. not even their college kids either, so <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. Yeah, that, I, I've suggested multiple times that we have live comps, but <laughs> always as a joke. Yeah. I, I just love to be backstage listening in during the game. And it's so interesting to hear, especially because... It's more fun to be shotcasting this. It, it is very fun, fun to be shotcasting this. Shot if you're actually physically here in the arena, you will be able to hear people shouting over each other, depending on how close you are sitting to the stage. But at the same time, the crowd on those four-man shatters that Panda was throwing out? Oh, absolutely. We actually had genuine crowd reactions to mm -hmm. those. And we are seeing people fill in. Because we're in person. Well. Yeah. No, That's beautiful. There is a crowd in person. Hi, guys. Let's go! Woo! Woo! And that's what makes these in-person events so much more exciting, right? Exactly. It's, it's very It's easy. the atmosphere. Yeah. It's very easy to see your opponents as just as their characters or just as their names. But when you're looking to your left and you're seeing a legitimate person... But when I'm calling Panda MVP, you're scared. Absolutely. <laughs> when I'm naming a player when and I'm going, this guy is good. We're, we're talking about a specific player and hyping them up. That makes this so much more real, especially for GCU. I also very much appreciate the Tracers from both teams. I don't know if I can... Yeah, just, just a, up, a quick thank you to both teams. It's... Mm, <laughs> mm. Those tra that Tracer play at the beginning of both those maps was so good. Absolutely love to see it. And the Tracers were doing so well, too. Yeah. Especially, it was... Blue was ASU, correct? Uh, yes, Blue was ASU. Blue's ASU... Uh, ASU's Tracer getting into the back line almost completely for free. <sighs> so many pulse bombs were getting thrown left and right, and that's what happens. So many sticks, too. Bullying yeah. the Reinhardt with that pulse. Oh, because if you're not able to get one clip, you're still able to pump damage into the Demon, into the Reinhardt. And yeah. even if you aren't getting kills, that pressure... Even if you're not being an assassin on Tracer, that's not always your job. Right. You, you can still, like, tickle them a little bit back from behind. Yeah. If, you, if you get the Reinhardt to turn around, that's a free shatter. Exactly. And that pressure... Knowing that you have that in the back, being that decoy is just so powerful. It's so important for those tracers, especially if you have one tracer that's able to do that more effectively. Because a scary tracer will push a team into disarray, both communication-wise and just in play. It wrecks havoc on the comms too. When you're looking at tempo and teams that are trying to set up their win condition and push their win condition, having a tracer on the back line is so distracting. Or even if a team's trying to regroup and the tracer gets ballsy and just uh -huh. clips if, someone trying if to you have the tra If you have the teams that are trying to hold space and the tracer's just even saying hello. Because the recall is such a powerful ability. The recall is such a powerful ability to get into the back line that you know, like, you can get in there for free. And yeah. just saying hello, sticking your head into the back line, so incredible. Especially important. when paired with a D.Va, being able to have that partner of, de of defense matrix. At the defense matrix, and if you're able to coordinate dives. Yeah, the additional well. pressure from a dive. Yeah. Because you, it's not common with Brawl. To, normally, Brawl, you have the D.Va just sticking on the right heart, right? Exactly. But with the Tracer, you're able to have the D.Va just slip through the team if they don't have any CC, and yeah. then blow up the back line. Even if you're not able to get kills, forcing the lamp or forcing the beat is absolutely massive value. Especially if your team does the same. Because mm -hmm. if you're the aggressor and you're using the same resources, you have an advantage. This also creates really interesting play to watch, too, right? Oh, it does. That's why we're talking about it, right? Well, like, for example, uh, we had the... I think, it was, I think it was GC that had the support duo that just held out King's Row. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, GC uh, varsity. Was, uh, the Red Dawn with the Lamp Window. Yeah. Baptiste on the high ground on the first point of King's Row with Lamp mm -hmm. Window. And then Q-Tip oh. just vibing on point. Q-Tip going to town He's just the slaying it on point. Literally got a 3K, I think. Yeah. He, he like, final blows, 3K. It was at least a 2K. At least. And he was just literally putting the team on his back. And that's so big on heroes like Lucio that aren't designed to have that that lethality, right? Exactly. It's not a DPS that's in the back line saying hello, it's the... Lucio Lucy. usually wins duels not by lethality, but by outlasting the opponent. Just by sustaining. Yeah, just mm -hmm. by sustaining. But q was just damaging. He was going to town. He was just damaging. He was a third DPS. Mm -hmm. GC was running triple DPS. G GC, <laughs> GC was running four DPS because you had the, the bat. The bat, too, with the window. The bat with the window is basically... The support said my, my DPS are dead. Looks like it's my job. <laughs> And, and that's what you love to see is when you have players that are so good and they know exactly what when they are and are not supposed to DPS. Like, when you have fights break down like that, sometimes you can just be like, hey, Bat, throw a window. Have fun, you know? Go. Yeah. 
Go have a good time. Yeah, just go have a good time. That's what Panda was doing. <laughs> Panda was having a good time, dude. <laughs> Panda just walked in, had a lamp, and just said, I'm here. Worship me. I'm here. How are you guys doing? How's your day? It was, uh, I'm, I, knew, I know beforehand I was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trash talk ASU <laughs> and all these different things, but I can't. You, I can't. When you have plays They're so pretty. This good. You can't help but look past the people. You can't help but exactly. look past the organizations. It's, it's the, just the play. The it's the pure gameplay. And the play. Yeah. You, you have to respect it no matter where it's coming from. Exactly. As, as much as it hurts. As much as it hurts. Yeah. It, it does. Oh, geez, you kids, as much as it hurts. Just a little bit. I mean, our boys are up now. Our boys are up now. I believe in them. We'll, we'll see. I genuinely believe in them. Ho hopefully, we're going to be hyping up GCU instead of. I BSU. think they can hear us, right? Ideally. Now. Not all of them have had hold on. Yeah, they can hear us. Yeah. Good luck, guys. Hi, Mark. Hi, Mark. Nice. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I believe in them. Yeah, I, I really do believe in them. I, I think this is. Because they were killing in that game. This is, at the very worst, winnable for GCU. Yeah. I, I think this is going to be a solid game no matter what. And I think. Ju judging from how both games went, GCU Varsity was looking insanely clean in their game, and so was ASU. Absolutely, and not only have they been looking clean in the game, they've been looking clean in their, in their practices and in their games, other games as well. Exactly. Which I think is a more important metric here. Yeah. Because... Well, because the atmosphere of a game day is much different than practice. Right. The, or even just trying to comp ladder. Mm -hmm. The, the ex extended pressure on the whole team. And I know sometimes these teams can have like performance anxiety and they start to get in their yeah. own heads. Uh, that's, that's something we've seen kind of all across the board. Mm -hmm. So... Hopefully, being at home and at GCU in the arena is going to ease a little not bit. Not that we play in the arena very often. No. Hope not yet. Ah. True. Not yet. Ah. Not yet. There may be more of this. We'll see. I'd be happy to be here for more of this. I would love to do more of this. But yeah, this, this is a lot of fun. This has been a blast for me. Yeah, I'm glad to be back. I haven't like really done a lot of Overwatch in the past, like mm -hmm. what six months. Good, because you've been focusing on Dead by Daylight, right? Yeah. I'm the, I'm the Dead by Daylight community manager, for anyone who doesn't know. Um, I, I've played Overwatch for like five years, uh -huh. but I uh, got drafted into that mm -hmm. and decided to just stick to it for a bit. St step Been back having in. fun with it. I actually met one of the Overwatch team players playing that game, and that's half the reason I'm here right now. <laughs> so, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, I'm happy for you. It's known about yeah, how you get here. Everybody's it's about what you here, do when you're here. And we're all having a good time. The, team, the teams are showing that. That's, yeah. The, the teams, teams are showing that. The teams are showing that. Their not, gameplay is just winning right now. Not, not only are they winning and putting up a great performance, but everybody's having a great time. Exactly. And Even in, if you're not winning, you're playing a competitive game, and it's not upsetting you. And Hopefully. The, these losses are so close. Like, even I think GCU Varsity versus JV was the most dominant performance. Yeah, it was the most dominant performance in terms of in, overall. In, in terms of overall. But the effort that's being put in with games that are that close yeah, but are so Even much then, Varsity fun. was winning fights. It's not like they didn't win a single team fight. Right, yeah. J Varsity J was winning fights. Varsity was JV. And, yeah. JV was winning fights. JV was winning fights, and they were, they were kicking. You had, you had my boy Tyler in the back line. Yeah, I don't want to be mean to U of A, but in that King's Row game. Mm. That was just dominant ASU. Absolutely. It was just dominant ASU. The full hold into it's the It's not even that they were playing badly. Right. Just like the ASU was just on their game when for you, that map. When you look at like dominant performances, it doesn't have to mean that it's a bad team. Exactly. It just means that there's a good team that is on fire and just ready to go. Yeah, because we were talking about how King's Row is kind of the ego pick map. Right. For hybrid. And U of A being like, well, we're comfortable on it. Mm -hmm. If that was their, their thought process going into King's Row, that's probably why they, they lost. Because they weren't like, we're going to win on King's Row. The Reinhardt duels were really close on Oasis oh. as well. It's such an important map pick that if you're... I think Panda just got a download, though. Yeah. I think really just downloaded. I think it was a, an interesting pick by U of A, though. If, you're, if the Reinhardt duels are even or even going to the side of ASU, it's an interesting choice to go to King's, King's Row. Row yeah. All people run are Reinhardt. That's but I think it's seen. because uh, U of A has only played Brawl this entire time. That's true. And ASU started on Dive, if I remember correctly. They I, th I think Winston we've Devo. only seen... Oh, they started on... They started Winston Devo, yeah. They started Winston Devo on one map of Oasis. But well, yeah, but it, it almost worked out. Almost. The first fight. And but then when it didn't, they swapped, understandably. But yeah. at the same time... If it doesn't work, it doesn't that work. That means they're comfortable playing other things. True. Because right. they're doing that first round of a tournament. True. That's that's their big. first playing round of a tournament. That's big for momentum to be able to start that off and say like we're willing to get a little creative. Yeah, we, we don't just play brawl. Yeah, 
We, we, we have other tools in our kit, and exactly. we're, we're ready Brawl to Brawl may be the strongest right now, mm -hmm. but we can play anything you asked us to play. Especially on the DPS, right? The tanks, the tanks are important, right? No, no we were seeing everything them. from Tracer Cassidy to Soldier Torb. Soldier Torb? or We like saw Soldier Torb <laughs> at so a collegiate level. Soldier we saw Soldier Torb. Soldier Torb into the Pharah, especially, is an incredible pick. I'm I'm curious how it was kind of coincidental how they just kind of knew that was going to work out, especially yeah. because you were able to have the Torb turret there pressuring the fair out of the sky. I think they expected it because um, of the amount of verticality mm -hmm. in King's Row and the open airspace. But at the same time, with the right hit scan, if you can't pressure the high ground that hit scans on, then you might be kind of screwed. Especially, I think it was a, a bait with the Widowmaker. Mm -hmm. So I might be wrong. I might be thinking too far into this. Maybe, but. If the far was taking the, the vertical space mm -hmm. and baiting the hit scan into an open place to shoot them, oh, to get a then the widow, the widow could, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that's I might be thinking too far into this. But <laughs> we're, we're not mind readers, but I'm, I'm just analytical <laughs> when it comes to Overwatch. That's something that's so important when you have that big of a time bank and you know you full held as well. Exactly. You can you want to try things. You can afford to like play it slow, try things, throw it, like if Confuse something them. sticks, like throw things against the wall. If it doesn't stick, just reset. Yeah, you can always swap. Because from, from the King of the Hill maps, they knew they were better at, uh, at Brawl. Right. They, they, or at least they, they felt confident they were better at Brawl. They knew that... Those maps were very close. Right, right, right. But they felt confident they were better at Brawl. They knew that if they wanted to try something and it didn't work, they had a baseline to fall back to, and that's so important. Yeah. Especially with the Reinhardt play. Exactly. It was just pristine. So good. I'm not going to be over Panda. I'm just not. I'm I, just not. I, I I'm just not. I really want to see Flamehead... Mr. Daniel having a good time going on, up against Panda on this next map against Panda. Ooh, that'll be a good one. Because that'll this be will come one. down to a lot of the Reinhardt pressure, especially how well the rest of the team is able to play around each Reinhardt shield. Yeah, I think it'll be important to especially watch the off tanks mm. play their Diva, or if anything else comes out, might see Zarya. It's true. Genuinely, might see Zarya, but I do think for the most part we'll see Diva, especially at the off tank tank play depending on the DPS, right? Exactly. If you have a Tracer or if you have the mate, we're starting to see people play at a level to where you're really, realistically, you have the Divas eating Blizzards consistently. That's you, true. You have the Blizzards being eaten, you have the Pulse Bomb I don't being think I've eaten. seen a Blizzard get eaten today, though. We have not seen one Granted, yet. the mates have really been throwing them at the floor to make that harder. That's true. They, they've been walling off the Divas, throwing them right at their feet, trying yeah. to play it safe. Making sure the defense matrix can't get to their Blizzard, because that was one of the prime reasons that I think ASU was dominating mm -hmm. in King's Row, was they were able to completely isolate that D.Va. Either freeze the D.Va then Blizzard, or wall the D.Va off then Blizzard two people on the other side of the wall. Or even just pressure the D.Va. It was just beautiful positioning, too. You don't have to kill the D.Va. You don't have to demech her. You can get her to look the wrong way with another flanking DPS, and May just tosses the Blizzard on the ground. Exactly. And it's massive value for these flanks. Yeah, it was perfect. Perfect. But that's what you love to see when you're playing at this level, because you know both teams are old tracking. So both teams know exactly what the opposing team have, and exactly. you have both teams that are fight planning. Or should know. Should. Should. Should know. But that's everything that we're seeing, it's very easy to write it off as just like, oh, the Reinhardt got a shatter. He, yeah. he saw an opportunity. But you have the entire team that's working together in order to establish these win conditions and follow through with them. And, yeah. and that's, that's how you're supposed to play this brawl as a team game, right? It's, it's not just the Reinhardt hitting the shatters. There are six people. That's why people, brawl is such an impressive right. team comp. Yeah. That, that coordination is so necessary. Because death ball sounds easy. I promise, it sounds easy. It is not. Everyone calls, for example, back when Rolock didn't exist, mm -hmm. goats, brainless. Right. Everyone calls it brainless, but the Reinhardt still had to make the plays. That's the thing. The Reinhardt still had to make the plays. And it's the same thing here. It's the same principle in Brawl. Because goats was really just an uber Brawl comp. Mm -hmm. That's all it really was. Right. Yeah. Um, it was just three tanks, it three support. Brawl and trying to, yeah, it was Brawl and steroids trying to keep the Rhine alive. Right. You literally had Zarya Diva attached to a Rhine. Mm -hmm. And you were just like, well, if the point is to keep the Rhine alive, we'll just keep them alive forever. Just keep everybody alive and insert yeah. them into the back line. Exactly. <laughs> and that's, that's, that's why Goats was so good. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not like you just walk into the enemy and you win. Right. You still had to still figure out what you were going to do, how you were going to approach, what your options were, what the threats were, that kind of thing. And but it's the same kind of thing with these brawl mirrors. Right. Just with a little more DPS play. And we have seen these teams setting up win conditions with the May walls and trying to play off of those. And I'm, one thing I'm surprised we actually haven't seen. I'm sorry, I'm cutting off. No, no, no. Um, one thing I'm surprised we haven't seen too much of is the Ash. 
to throw That's dynamites true. over these shields. Granted, they could be eaten. I, things I, like that. I think Cassidy gets a lot more value from Brawl, though. Right? Because I don't think we're going to see an Ash unless we have, like... I know GCU Varsity likes their pseudo-dive comp, and I Fair. know that they love to run Ash on double shield. I don't think they get that... Because you don't get the long-range value because you don't have the DPS in the fight, right? Because you kind of have the Echo and the Tracer that are like in the back line that still keeps them in the fight. Yeah. But Ash is very difficult to play with, especially getting peel from your team. I feel like Ash would have been a de at least a decent pick mm -hmm. on the King's Row stuff. It would, it would be an interesting way to play Ash to like have her rotate with the team instead of taking super long sidelines, especially into the yeah, Widow. Basically lane. playing Ash like McCree, or Cassidy, sorry. But Name's playing Jay. Ash in the same brawly style. Yes, playing with a brawly style and trying to get a little more creative with the Dynamite. Yeah, I think would be very interesting to see. Because the coach gun acting as a sort of flashbang. Oh, like trying to push the Reinhardt back behind the team so you can flash people. Yeah, or like coaching up so that you can get a dynamite mm. from a specific angle. I have seen Ashes do that. You could coach like up to try to bait the Diva DM up, like try to get a grab or a blizzard in. Or or a Rhine shield up. I could see it. Because Ryan can block the dynamite. Oh, get the Rhine shield up for a shatter. Yeah. yeah. So it's not not a bad idea. It's, it's really not. It's a funky mind game. It's not undoable. Yeah, it's not undoable. It's I a doubt, funky mind game. Right? I doubt we're going to see it from either team yeah. because I know... Uh, it's just something I've seen in ladder and right. it was really cool. <laughs> so, <laughs> seeing that in ladder was sick. But Just see something and you're like, eh, yeah, it's just it. minor mind games that I've seen mm -hmm. playing. I mean, it's console, so... Right. It's not always easy to flick down, bump, flick up. Do you only play on console or PC? No, well? I have played PC quite a bit um, okay. more recently. Like mm -hmm. last school year, I played a lot of ladder on PC. I got up to almost diamond. Um, but I was playing at a high diamond level, um, bordering masters on console. Wow. Which is essentially top 500, because not many people play console. Because <laughs> <Well, you can, laughs> it's top 500 in console, but as well with console, you have to look at like SR inflation. Yeah. Because SR, it's very tempting to look at SR for console and be like, I'm a top 500 player. Exactly. But, the SR isn't objective. Exactly. You good? No, I saw something. Fair enough. Yep. Um, but yeah, I'm... I'm still fairly new to PC when it comes to Overwatch. Mm -hmm. I still watch a lot of it. But... Uh, are we on break? I think we're on a break. Okay, cool. Jay? Jay, are we on break? Okay, cool. Ready for this final? I said, are we ready for this final? Yeah. Woo! That's what I like to hear. Come on, let's get some life. Come on. I need some, I need some love out here. We're having a pretty fun day so far. What'd you say, huh? Yeah? Yes, you get a trophy. I want a trophy. I don't I, I get a participation award. 
Anyway, coming up, we got our finals match between our GCU Varsity. Come on out, boys. Come on out. Give them some love. Give them some love. Woo! There we go. There's some life. There's some life. And up next, we got our ASU Team Black. Let's go. They will be competing for this beautiful trophy. And the winners will get to lift it up and take a nice, pretty photo. And be able to take it home. I want to take that home. Looks real nice. It's going to be a best of five. Should be real fun. Let's give it up real quick one more time while we get in the game. 